Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today a little bit I'm late from the average time usually I came here. This is why we have a few of you here uh, because nobody expect me to be here right now but soon people will come. Please invite your friends, share the link with your friends um, in every possible way. Uh, you see, uh, I saw a post on Facebook saying why Christian friends don't debate this guy if he claimed that he is knowledgeable? Okay, I mean here I'm in here. You see, I even I made I made the the topic open debate. Can a Muslim answer any question? And just to make it simple, I will change the title. Can a Muslim do a Muslim dare to call me to ask me a question he like me to ask him? I mean, how how easy can it be more than this? You are the Muslim, you call me, you tell me, I want you to ask me this question. And I challenge you to answer the question you asked me to ask you. <laughs> I mean, how simple it, it is more than this. You call me and you tell me, I want you to ask me the following question. And I challenge you to answer the question you ask me to ask you. And you will see you will not be able to answer. So who is the brave Muslim he dare to do so? They don't. Because they knew Islam is a very, very silly religion and Muslims have no answer for anything. I mean, how easier I can make it for you? You tell me the question. Imagine you are going to take an exam. And then in this school, they say to you, you choose the questions which you like us to ask you. Can I do it? I mean, more easier than this? You tell me the question. Call me. Here we go. My Skype is open. You call me, you say to me, hey, Christian Prince, I want you to ask me this question. You will see. First, they don't dare to call. Second, they have no answer for the same question they asked me to ask them. Because Islam is a very funny, stupid religion. But if someone else, if someone, not me, like an American woman or etc. You know, um, she she make the same challenge. You will see the Muslim lined up to call her. If somebody is twenty one years old, nineteen years old, seventeen years old, speaking about religion, the Muslims they will be fighting over talking to him, especially if it's a female. And by the way, here I want to warn Christian ladies. I receive many of you speaking to me says I'm talking now trying to uh, to uh, like debating with the Muslim I mean did you notice did you, did you notice ladies that the ones who's talking to you always are male let me tell you the mentality of Muslims they speak to you for one reason they are they don't care really for religion they care for you for you are a female he is looking for a female if you have a picture in your profile and you have an you know a good-looking uh, face this is why he's talking to you. Did you ask yourself why Muslims are not talking to you? I'm talking to an Algerian guy. I'm talking to a Moroccan guy. I'm talking. Did you ask yourself why they are not talking to me? So don't be a foolish woman. Those people, they are not seeking God. The one who is seeking no one about Christianity, he will not talk to you. He's talking to you just because you are a female and he think you are an easy fish. Otherwise, we are here. Why they don't call us? Here we go. I'm saying even to them, you ask me the question which you like me to ask you. Right? You call me, you ask me the question, you like me to ask you. Still, they will not do it. 
No, my point is, if a, if a, a women, women, Christian women, they should be speaking to you know Muslim women. Why you are going to talk to a Muslim man? Those people they have a wrong mentality about women. You know that they believe that women always are a sex object. So why you are speaking to them? Because simply you are being ignorant and you have no education and you do not know the mentality of those people. Like why you are you are uh, you are uh, uh, someone who have an extreme knowledge and you are the one who is the source of knowledge and they are coming to you lined up. Why why we don't see the Muslim men lined up to talk to me? Go right now, open an account in Facebook, put a nice picture of a of a of a blonde lady. You know she is young, and you will see all. Actually, you can go right now in Facebook, see any woman. She is posting a picture of herself almost half naked, and you will see ninety nine percent of the subscribers are Muslims. It's a fact. So you, as a Christian woman, you should not associate yourself. In a place where it can lead you to something bad because those people they are not talking to you for the purpose of knowing he can send you a file he can hack your computer he can let those who know how to do it do it if there is a muslim he have a question and he want to know tell him okay we have a guy his name is a christian prince uh, we have a guy his name is sam shamoon all right there is many so what about you send them to them I welcome everybody here we go my skype is open i'm not like the others who like don't take calls and just talk to themselves and then they hang up on themselves and i'm not putting uh, the the muslims down my, my friend you see i'm a middle eastern i know the culture we have there i know how they look at western women I know how they look at women. So don't put yourself in such a position. You want to talk to uh, about Christ? Okay, what about you talk to a Muslim woman? Let women speak to women, let men speak to men. Uh the legendary Faris, this guy. Actually, you know, this guy he called himself legendary, the same as Muhammad, he called himself a prophet, but yet he have no prophecy. We asked Faris, the one who called himself legendary Faris, we asked him, What is the prophecy of your prophet? He said he don't need need to have one. Isn't it you, Faris, who said that to me? Have you ever heard of a prophet? Muslims they call him a prophet of God, but yet he do not need to have a prophecy. I mean, this is must be a legendary. Answer. What is the prophecy of your prophet? He don't need to have one. What? Okay, call me Faris and tell me what is the what is the prophecy of your prophet? Can you? Call me. What is the prophecy of your prophet? Or you know what? Call me and ask me to ask you a question. This is a guy who he claimed to be a Muslim, but yet he have no idea what Islam is about. And he is the kind of a Muslim, if you ask him a question, he speak about everything except the question we are talking about. You ask him, how tall are you? He will start telling you, well, my neighbor, he have a metal roof and it is a green. And by the way, when we went to the uh, uh, to the grocery store, he did not find banana yesterday. But this is not my question. This is what the Muslims do. Well, call me, Faris. Call me. Here we go. We are we are live on air. Who is the Muslim wanna call me? And he will ask me to ask him a question of his choice. You give me the question. I ask you the question. What do you think? You ask me the question, you tell me, hey, Christian Prince, ask me this question. 
and I will repeat exactly the same words you said to me and I challenge you to answer the question you asked me to ask you a nation who go around a room who kiss a black stone who bow down to stones and yet they think they are worshiping God and we are the pagan all of this religion is based on stones stone in the middle stone in the corner we go around the stones we kiss the stones we touch the stones and we believe they are holy stones and yet they call us pagan who is the pagan and to make it more funny the muslims they go to the neighbor house which is shaitan house satan he live in the same town and they throw rocks at the house of shaitan yeah right right, right. shaitan he lived there i mean how silly how stupid this religion is do you really think satan he lived there and the funny what make it more funny the saudi they changed the house of shaitan they rebuilt a new one <laughs> What happened to the old house? <laughs> Shaitan, he moved out. He have a new house made from concrete. If we go right now, let me show you. Let us go to images and love. Oh boy. Let us see if we can find the house of Satan. I see it, but all the pictures are from far away, which is very funny. Mm, hold on. All right. Let us see here. Okay, we found something. Let us go back and show you the speaker religion. Let me introduce to you the house of the devil hmm. where is the picture where 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 here we go guys this is the house of mr shaitan <laughs> And this is the place where you will get injured and you will lose your head because people who they are far away try to throw rocks at the shaitan house, but because there is no way they can reach, especially especially women, you know, like women, they cannot even throw most of them. They cannot throw the the, the rock like more than like maybe few meters. So you are you are a hundred meter away and you will throw a rock, but because you can't get close, so so crowded, so you throw it anyway and you hit whoever in the front of you in his head. This is the place where you should every every Muslim should wear a helmet. It's a war zone. And this is a pagan practice, practice before Islam, believing that this is the house of the devil. Now look what the house used to look like, and look at the new house of the devil. The new house of the devil is totally different. Let me uh, look, look for the new house. Hmm. Let us go stay here first. Stay here, and I will look in different page. I want to show you the new house. They build a new house for the devil. 
because people they keep throwing rocks and that thing in the middle which is the same as a masonic uh, 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 column uh, uh, it keep being destroyed uh, look here how bigger now it's getting bigger look at this here this is advanced one this one getting bigger now look how higher it is they are building it up 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 all right so the, the house of the devil is a changing and then later we will find a new house just wait for the new house uh... <laughs> let me show you the new house of the devil the new house of the devil is not like this no more I have nothing to do with the old shape I mean, what kind of religion? You Muslim, you keep changing the house. The house, the, the Kaaba changed. The house, the Kaaba now is made of concrete. They add many things. Look, this is another. Uh, this is another picture for the house of the devil. But this is when when there is no uh, there is no uh, ceremony of throwing rocks. You see it how it is. This is an old picture, but I'm trying to show you the new one. <clears throat> Let me see. You see how the new one look like? You will not even believe it. They come with a design totally different from the old design in order for Muslims to, for, to, to easy to hit the rock because you need to hit the rock in the middle. <laughs> Where is the pictures? Where is uh, I'm trying to find I'm looking second page here in the side to see if I can find it What a religion what a religion man oh. Okay, I will change I will change the search Here we go, guys. Look at the new modern design of. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Look at this. Let me show you this. Let me. I'm trying just to find you a clear picture so you can see with me how Islam is very flexible. I mean, that is something. From that little tiny thing in the middle. To this big column and now you will see with me what is the change happened to Islam I have a lot of uh, pictures in front of me but I'm trying to choose one which is really um, take the whole scene from far away which one which one is good Hmm. Okay, look like we have a few choices to show you. Uh, let us choose this one. I think this one is fine. Guys, look, compare between both pictures. You know, you know what? <clears throat> let me see if I can show both pictures together, maybe. It's okay. Let us see this. Do you see what happened now? Do you see how the column this is this is cement this is concrete from the old rocky small column it used to be like one meter high then it became six meter high then it became five floor concrete building and there's a floors there's a floors there's a floor underneath just to get a close to show you what what we have right now because they have a problem to clean the the, the rocks so look what they did they put this rock in the middle concrete and now here, if you notice, here where the rocks you throw them, they will go down, and there's a the trucks will clean right away. <laughs> this is the old one. This is the old one. 
look at the old one this is older version but this is not very old by the way this is old but not very old and then this is the new one it looked like 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 the ship the 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 the, the ark of noah and then you go there's a the floors you are not done yet my friend look at this look at this so there's there's upside the floor there is downstairs the floor you know because Muhammad is is a, he's proven to us that he's a false prophet. Don't Muhammad he knew that this is this this place is not capable of taking all this crowd. You see, I made a calculation based on the numbers Muslims they have of the population of Muslims today. Every Muslim he have to do Umrah in his lifetime. Umrah is to visit the Kaaba and do like going around the ceremony, the ritual. At least once in your lifetime, and this is a must for every Muslim if he can. Now it's very possible for you to go because now it's a lot easier than before. You can just take an airplane and you can land in Mecca after a few hours. It doesn't matter really where where you live. So every Muslim he have a duty to go and visit the Kaaba and visit and this 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 satanic place. But if we have, according to Muslims, numbers, which I believe it's a big false numbers, 1.6 billion. And the Kaaba, the city of Mecca, cannot host more maximum, maximum, like two, two millions, the city is, is dead. They can't even have a place for, for sleeping. They sleep in tents, etc. And how people, they can go around the, the Kaaba. Inside the sacred mosque, which fit like what? Maximum 60,000, 50,000, 80,000? How you can host millions? Because if every you know how many how, how what is the average of life? Especially in Islamic countries, people don't live really maximum sixty years. As general generally speaking, the average like this is the person who lived really long sixty years. But because they are not living healthy. And life is tough for the majority of them. The majority of the Muslims are very poor. So most of the people, they die in a very early age. So let us say, if we say the average of life, you live 80 years. You live, you know what? You live 100 years. So you have 100 years span to go and visit the Kaaba. You will never have a chance to visit the Kaaba. Because the Saudi government, they don't give more than 2 million a year visa. Because simply, they cannot host more. Two million out of 1.6 billion, as the Muslims claim their number. That's mean in order to 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 have a chance to visit the Kaaba, you have to live many lives in order to do, perform what Islam requires you to do. And this is additional proof that Islam is a false religion, and Muhammad he have no idea that the population of Muslim will be so huge. Otherwise. The idea of going around the Kaaba and touching stones and kissing them, and, and not only it's pagan, it's a stupid because how this small little town and this is small mosque. You see, they keep building and building and expanding with the with the mosque they have, but this is still very small. This is a small square. I mean, this is nothing really. They make a floor, second floor, a th a third floor, first floor, but still it is will not be able to host a small number who live in the city those who live in the city itself it's not enough for them for the most to host them there is no way a mosque can host people who live in a city and then they throw in the rocks which is a practice happened and exist before islam at this house And going around the Kaaba, which is a practice exists before Islam, and it's a pagan house. And yet the Muslim this they claim that Abraham he built the house. And let me ask you, Muslims, Abraham he built the house, why he left it? What happened? I mean, he built the house in Mecca and then he left. If this is the house of Allah, the biggest one, the most important one, why Abraham he left? Any Muslim can tell us. There is no, there is not even a single reference in history about anybody, anyone says ever that Abraham he came to Mecca.
The Muslim, they say to you, just to show you the contradictions, Muhammad, he always come with. If you ask the Muslims, was Muhammad, if we ask this guy, he is in text, let us ask him. Was Muhammad the first messenger for the Arab? Are you there, uh, the legendary, Far legendary Faris? Who is the Muslim to answer me? Was Muhammad the first messenger to the Arab? They would say yes. So how you say Abraham and Ishmael, and he is the father of the Arab anyway, according to you. He was there, and they are the one who built the Kaaba. Huh? I mean, isn't it, this is a very clear contradiction? Muhammad is the first prophet who came to Mecca, and before him there is no prophet. But yet you claim that Abraham and Ishmael they are the one who built the Kaaba. And not only that, you claim that Muhammad himself is descendant from Ishmael. Any Abdul? Anyone knows which verse in the Quran it says that there is no messenger came to Mecca before Muhammad? Anyone knows? Who knows? Who is the Muslim can tell me? Uh, legendary Faris, are you there? Can you tell us a brother? Where in the Quran it says Muhammad is the only messenger who came to Mecca? Do you have any idea? Hmm? <laughs> if we go in the Quran, We can find it here. Oh, <clears throat> in Chapter Thirty Two. Verse number three. Hmm? Chapter thirty two, verse number three. What this verse saying? Any Muslim can explain to us? Or do they say? He has for fraud. Nay, it is the truth from the Lord that thou mayst admonish a people to whom no warner has come before thee. <laughs> what a funny religion. What do you mean, no warner? He came before thee. So why you keep lying to us and you say Abraham was there, Ishmael was there, blah, blah, blah was there, and now we found that Muhammad is was the only one was there? Any Abdul? Mede, Mede, Abdul is needed. And you know, by the way, the Muslim they say to us that the Arab in the time of Muhammad they were amazed with the Quran, but the Quran says different story. Look, the Quran says that they say to him he's a fabricator. <laughs> they were not amused. They were saying this is this is stupid. This is garbage. This is a fabrication. Where the, where is the Arab were amused by this? I mean, what are you talking about? Don't you see it? Those are the Arab. They say to Muhammad, 
this is this is garbage hello this is stop doing fabrication stupid stories nobody was amazed with the Quran and each time Muhammad he speak he do poo poo this guy is a poo poo guy look now he made a poo poo he claimed that he is the first messenger who came to Mecca there's no other messenger came before him not even a warner yes my skype is open is your skype open uh, i'm used sorry sorry i'm used they were found it funny right it's my uh, my english sorry i i should not say that but i think they were amused <laughs> I am used to. <laughs> uh, Faris, Faris, give me, give me your name. I will call you. Give me your name, my friend, in Skype. What is your name in Skype? Don't look for it because you will not find it. You know, you will not be able to call me for some reason. It looks like Allah don't want me to call you to call me. So give me your name here. I will call you. What's your name? Give me your account. <clears throat> Hello, Fa Faris, brother of Faris. Hey, Faris, your prophet he used to recite the Quran, but he have no tear, brother. How he have you no know, tooth in he can recite the Quran? I mean, this is amazing. The guy, Muhammad, he lost all his teeth. They throw a rock at him and they broke all his teeth. Okay, what is your name in Skype so I can call you? I will call you. I don't want you to, uh, to waste gas. I will call you. Give me your name. Give me your name in Skype. I will call you. I want to know how Muhammad can recite the Quran. The guy he have no teeth. I mean, that's that's amazing. He remind me of this uh, false, false rabbi. Here we go, Faris. Finally, Faris, he called me. Hey, Faris, how are Hello. you? Hello, I'm good. How about you, CP? How why, are you? Doing? Why you are good, Faris? Did you drink camel urine today? Okay, but <laughs> just a minute, CP. No, I'm just please, being honest. Um, I, it's an honest question. I have to, nothing to do with yeah, anything. Yeah. Did you drink any camel that... urine today or something? Why you are why, why you feel can good? You me... Okay, can you give me the time to respond to CP, please? I, I, okay. re respond to what? We did not say anything. We were just saying hello. No, you ask about the camel urine. Okay, there is something. Oh, okay, our... go ahead. All right, go ahead. Okay. The answer, no. You see, uh, with other respect to you and the, to, to the Christians, my, my brother, hmm. um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did not force us to drink it. Did he force us? He said... Oh, no, to be honest, he did not force you. He just told you to do it. Is it an order or no, not? No, it's... It, uh, okay, okay, CP, CP. Is, uh, is it an uh, order or not? Uh, wait, uh, can you give me time, please? I would like to... We are, we are having a conversation, and... Faris. We are having a conversation. Wait, please, did, did he order it what? or not? You, you say yes or you say no? Did he order it no, or not? No, 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 I have not. Okay. I have not drank it. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Can, can I'm not it? asking if you drink it or not. I'm saying, yeah, 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 did know. he order the I Muslims know. to drink it? Yes or no? Uh, it was an optional. It's up to you whether you want to drink it or not. It's, it's, it's some kind of optional. And the CP also about this one, about this one. Can I say something? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Just two, two questions also. Can, can, kindly uh, say yes or no. Did you read the Bible from cover to cover? No, I did not really read the cover because the cover doesn't say anything. Ah, no, CP, my question was very direct and simple question. Did I know, I mean, you make your question. You go, my friend. I said, I said, I want a Muslim uh -huh. to call me and to ask me to ask him a question he, he, he uh -huh. liked. Okay. Uh -huh. And now you're asking me, did you read the Bible from uh, cover to cover? I mean, come on. This is a, you know, and, and you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. First of all, if I show you right now that the prophet he ordered the Muslim to drink camel urine, are you willing to apologize? No, okay. Can you give me the time to respond? 
What time to respond? You just told me no, he did not order no, us. You're, you're waiting for my response. How can I say something? My and friend, you, you just respond already. You told me a second ago, right. give me time to respond. I, I, I shut up. You, see, you respond. You said the prophet did not yes. order us to, or you know, I said, did no, he no, not no, order no, you? He no, said, no, he did I, not order. If I, I show the proof right now that the prophet, he ordered you, the prophet of Islam, he ordered you mm -hmm. to drink camel urine, what you will do? Are you willing to apologize? Uh, okay, can I say something? Thank oh, you. Oh, uh, again, uh, can I say something? You are saying you. something already. <laughs> Let us go to the if point, you, man. With all due respect, what, what did he, did he I mean, order did him to drink the camel urine? Either you say yes, firm. Yes, he ordered us, but it was an optional. It's ah, you, guys, it's an order. It's an it's an optional order. <laughs> A second ago, look at the hypocrisy. A second ago, I asked you the same no, question. You said no. You said no. Oh, I asked you, did you're you a prophet? No, 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 no. Everybody is watching. Everybody is my is my witness. It's recorded. You, I ask you, did the prophet okay, order ahead. you to drink camel urine? You said no. Why well, you are lying, <laughs> Faris? Come on. You cannot that, play games with the Christian prince. I am you the Christian like prince, and you are not. Right? Here we go. This is the reference in the front. It's, it says it says it says in the front of me. It says. Amarahum in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi shurbiha. Do you see it? Why you are lying? The prophet, he ordered them to drink the piss of the camel. Now, yeah, so he, like the last time and, and close the phone like the, the last two times. No, Anyhow, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. The, 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 the question said, is, no, no, why you did lie? If why you would like to close the phone, why you did lie? Because I am the only Abdul, as you're saying. Uh, no, you, you are not the only see, Abdul. You, you are not. Uh, first uh, of all, first of all, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you shave your mustache? Do you shave your mustache? Listen, that's not good. That is fair. Do you shave your mustache? Do you shave your mustache or not? Uh -huh. Do you shave your mustache? No, no, I have not. I have not. I have not. Okay. Let me ask you another question. This is I'm not I'm not no, being I'm, I'm not being see, I'm, I'm not being rude. I'm just trying to have a question. conversation with you because obviously question, obviously you are you are not a Muslim because the prophet he ordered the Muslim to shave their yes, mustache. I know. I know that. I okay, know so that. Know you are that. not shaving your mustache. You are not drinking camel urine, no. and your wife okay. she is taking hair from her face. I am sure. Did she? She take hair oh, from her what? face. When, when you finish, please give do me your wife time. take hair because from her face. Obviously, she does, otherwise, you would not even uh, stay married to her, she would divorce her. You know, so about the obviously, you Muslims, is, obviously, you Muslims one. don't want to be Muslims, the nobody Bible, will practice Islam. Yeah, the Bible has also, if you just, I mean, open the uh, the Bible, the on Bible. Matthew, yeah, uh, yeah, if you have the Bible with you, that's great because I we both know. We hmm. both know that you haven't read the Bible from cover to cover, or I mean, in short, <laughs> fully, every verse. Because you see, about the camel urine, it is something worse it has in the Bible. Really? Is, wait, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, and, and please, kindly. Okay, read, read for us. For read, for us. Read, read for us the verse saying that Christians should drink camel urine. No, no, no. CP, CP, okay. But you see, I give the time. You give me any verse in the Quran, I will read it. I am not ashamed to read the Quran. My, my, my friend, my friend, you are ashamed to read the whole you. Quran, and this is why you did uh, not give ask me. me. Okay, any verse? Until give me now, any verse, okay, 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 here I we go. I will, I will give you a verse which have no shame in it. All right. Wait a minute. It, it has see, no shame. Keep, no, 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 hold on, hold don't. on. You just said to me, "Give me a verse. I will give you a verse." Are you willing? Are you willing? Are, are you willing to take the verse or not? Huh? I thought you were gonna close the phone like the last time. No, Why are you gonna close the phone? I'm having fun, Abdul. Come on, listen, listen. Wait a okay. Here we go. No, no, I'm not. This is a verse in the front of you. This is a verse in the front of you. Read it for us and it's a point to us. Any Muslim woman, she can give her private part to the Prophet. I'm going to read it. I, I, what see, kind I'm of a Prophet and what kind of religion? Thing, you see, I just would like to make. I'm not here also to fight. It's quite. I mean, 3 a.m. And anyhow. About the camel, you, you said about the camel urine, mm. okay? Mm. The Bible in Matthew chapter 34, verse number 12, mm. it, God commanded, I mean, the people to eat their poop and make it in a sandwich. Go ahead. That's and a read big it. fat lie. Read the verse and everybody will laugh at you. Now, you you see, you don't have the Bible. That is a big never... fat lie. That is a big fat uh, lie. No, no, no. Don't tell me I don't have a Bible. I have a Bible. I have a Bible. Read for us the chapter you said and the verse you said. No, 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 no. Everybody will laugh at you. I challenge you, Abdul. You are a coward. You are a coward. You mention something, you prove it. You mention something, you prove it. Read for us the verse. <laughs> read for us the verse. Let us laugh. Uh, I'm not, I'm not let us uh, let us laugh, guys. He said, 
you, just to show you how stupid you are, in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, there's no chapter of 34, you idiot. Did you say Matthew chapter 34? There's no Matthew chapter 34. <laughs> If you open the Bible, you see, you're not there's no, it there's nothing is called what, what, what I Matthew, know. what Matthew so chapter 34? Chapter, see, the, uh, there is a book called because there is Matthew, Luke, John, and uh, I, don't know I heard this happened. before, brother. I heard this before. You said Matthew chapter 34. Where we can uh, find Matthew chapter 34, brother? Chapter 34, verse 12. You see, read it, go brother. Ahead. There's no chapter, it's called I chapter 34, brother. I just would like to make something. My brother, my friend, where we can find so Matthew that, chapter 34? I never ever read the Bible. Abdul, Abdul, what's Bible wrong with you? Word. Abdul, what's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing. Okay, you I'm know, asking okay. you, I'm asking you, my friend. I'm, I'm my, my, my Ab Abdul, I'm Abdul, ask, Abdul, wake up, Abdul. Listen, I'm where we can Bible. find I'm that saying. verse you mentioned in the Bible? I want you to show it to us. I'll read it for us, please. You see, I don't have the Bible because it's Abdul, I'm not no, you have the Bible. Look, obviously, you are the one who said to me, Christian yes, Prince, you did not read it from the yes. cover to the cover. And obviously, you are the one who did read it from the cover to the cover. And this is why yeah. we cannot find from the cover to the cover where the chapter you are talking about, where we can find Matthew chapter 34, verse number 13, as you said. Ask your ask your Bible, ask your about the scholar. What you my see, scholar, my, my my friend Abdul, what's wrong with you? What's scholar? What's <laughs> what is scholar? Abdul, what's scholar? You, you see, you're just killed. I mean interrupting. That's a very funny What's thing, wrong really. with you? What's I, scholar? I I, I want to ask all the scholars in the world, world, my friend. I, I'm all what I'm asking. You see, when I when you when a Muslim he asked me a, a question about Islam, I show him the verse, I read the verse for him, I show him the interpretation. Now you say to us, you have you have a chapter saying that God he said make make poop as a sandwich. I want to see the verse. You said to me Matthew chapter thirty four. See, the Christians, the Christians have never ever about and also guys, see, uh, and he called Pharisees. himself the legendary Pharisee. <laughs> yes, now I have finally become the super legendary Pharisee, not just a legend. Abdul, Abdul, like the book of Matthew, the, the book of Matthew, Ab Abdul, the book of Matthew does not contain uh -huh. 34 chapter. So you, you see, are uh, being a fool. Sorry to say. No, you're the fool. You're the fool. Well, then prove me wrong. Where you in see, the book of Matthew we can find Matthew because, chapter 34? I don't know. You see, I just check out the. I'm gonna, I'm, you see, uh, my way, I just. Okay, okay. So you do not Wait. know what are you talking about? This is a stupid of you, but no, this is no, normal no, for no, a Muslim. I know. I know. Because okay. the now, Christian also let us go. Let us go to the Quran. Abdul, you know what? I'm going to ask you. To ask me a question you like me to ask you i don't need about you see about that challenge i, I did not understand it and i don't care about that you are very slow i understand thing, i will repeat the challenge i challenge you to I'm ask me to ask you a question you are sure you can answer is it easy i mean how easy it can be more than this i challenge you listen listen i challenge you to ask me to ask you a question you can answer i have listened already to this abdul abdul i'm here just to make it no, no, I'm not kidding. again, not again. Let us go to business. Already we got you busted many times. So I'm oh, asking please, you, please, please can please. you ask Give me to ask you a question you can answer? <laughs> yes or no? Can you ask me a question have, you can answer? One question you did not even respond to. Choose, an answer, you choose, choose a question you can answer. Give me a question. Have I will ask so you exactly yes, the question as you give it to me. Yes or no? Do you see why you see I, you do, do you see why I hang up on him? Do you see why I hang up on him? He's a kid. Stupid kid. Maybe he is 50, 60 years old. I have no idea, but he's a stupid kid. What I can do? I mean, I have no patience for stupidity. Sorry. Brother Thitar. Brother Thitar. The Christian, they make fun of the Bible, of the of the, of the the Holy Prophet, saying that the Prophet, he ordered us to drink camel urine. First of all, camel urine is very tasty, and it's 10 times better than drinking Pepsi Cola. And actually, in Pakistan and Afghanistan, they found that American, they brought something, it's called seven up. And since that time, we Muslims, we walk seven steps and we jump because of that drink. So I advise all the Muslims to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and to drink camel urine only. Thank you very much. The Prophet, he did not order us to drink camel urine. I show him a reference, then he said, yes, he ordered us, but it's optional. Have you ever heard of an order which is optional? <laughs> it's an optional order, brother. <laughs> Abdul, 
I don't know how smart you are, how stupid you are, but when you say an order, it's not an optional. Otherwise, we will not call it order. We need an adult Muslim to call us, please. Stop sending me people in the age of 50 or 60. I want an adult. Muhammad at the age of 54, he felt like he's a teenage and he married Aisha at the age of six. And there's a woman in Austria, she paid fine for calling Muhammad a child molester. Sorry, lady, you are wrong. Muhammad is not a child molester. He is a pedophile, child molester who molested children. Muhammad did not molest. He raped them. Now, do we have any adult Muslim want to call us? I am not a same to read the Quran. What do you mean a shame? Look, look at this. وَإِمْرَأَ وَهَبَتْ نَفْسَهَا لِلرَّسُولِ إِنْ أَرَادَ النَّبِيُّ أَنْ يَسْتَنْكِحُهَا And you what? To if her. If the Prophet, he wished to if her. Any woman, she want to give herself to the Prophet and the Muslim, they give false translation. If the Prophet want to marry her. Name for me, one woman, Muhammad, she offered herself and he married her. Just one. You cannot find one. He if them only. Excuse my language. He don't marry them. And the Quran doesn't say the word marriage. Why in the world a man who is a prophet of God, he have many, many wives already, his God made verse for him says, it is lawful for me, for you, all the women, brother, including any believing women who gave herself, look, look, Look at the Muslim translation. Who dictate her soul. Muhammad will sleep with her soul? What is the purpose of this? It's sex. What dictate her soul? Hello, Blafet. I dictate my soul for you. Okay, take off your panty. <laughs> what soul, my friend? What is the, what does, where is the word soul coming from? Nafsaha, it's about herself, not her soul. Why, Muhammad is God or he's the devil maybe? Because how you can dictate your soul to a man? Huh? Hello? Do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? Who is a Muslim is going to call me and ask me a question which he like me to ask him. Any Abdul? And brother, in Matthew chapter 34, it says a drink, uh, sorry, eat, eat a poopoo sandwich. <laughs> Matthew 34. Look like Matthew extending, you know, like maybe Matthew, he wrote more, more, more chapters later. Uh, he's a kid. I want to, uh, I want to speak to an adult. An adult, a Muslim, six years and older. Sorry. From now on, we will not receive any phone calls from a Muslim under the age of six, which is the age of maturity in Islam, according to Muslims. Aisha, she was a mature female at the age of six. Alhamdulillah. And the Muslims, to defend their prophet, they start making an article saying that uh, Aisha, she was. 18 years old, the brother, and even one of them, he said she was 31. <laughs> hey, Abdul, when Aisha, she was 18, Muhammad was dead. Do you think she did marry him after he died? Oh, he's a prophet. Even he, he, he's dead, but yet his uh, willy is working. <laughs> the guy is dead, yet he can have sex with Aisha. And Aisha, she married him after he died. Yeah, right. Hello? Hello, brother. Hey, my friend, how are you? The Abduls have decided not to call. Yeah. Uh, did you find for me the chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 34? <laughs> <laughs> they are looking for Matthew 34. I keep looking. Uh, I think, yeah. Now, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, make a contribution, CP. All right. Um, if you read, and maybe you can open it for me, uh, the Quran chapter chapter 35 and verse 24 yeah the muta one 
Okay. Yeah, if you could read it. Hmm. Chapter 35 and verse 24. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so basically, in 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 that verse, Allah says um, that there were, to every people, every nation, He sent um, a warner before before Muhammad. There there was no uh, there was you, never. You said you said four twenty four. No, thirty five twenty four. Oh, sorry, I got you wrong. Okay, okay. So I thought you were talking about that. Thirty five. Yeah. 35 past 24. All right, okay. okay. Um, I'm not very sure what he says in Arabic, but the English um, says <clears throat> that there was never any nation among the sons of Adam. Yeah. But Allah sent one us to them. Yeah. So so if every people group received received a one, and then remember the verse you read earlier on chapter 32. Yeah. It says that the Arabs didn't have a warner. They didn't have a prophet before Muhammad. So it, it means Allah is just confused here. Well, it, there, is, it, there is many verses speaking about the same issue, that <laughs> that uh, the Arab have no uh, messenger except Muhammad. You know the the and you know yeah. and the other the other issue too. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad uh, he was sent. To the people of Mecca and what is around it in the neighborhood, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So uh -huh. how the Muslims? Because at that time, Muhammad, his dream is lim is is local. You know, to be acknowledged, to be a prophet locally. He was not uh, uh, thinking about the corporation. How 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 big is going to grow? So mm -hmm. at that point, he want to be a prophet for Mecca and what is around it. If you go in the Quran, it says chapter six, verse number ninety-two. It says. That Allah He sent him as a warner or as a messenger for what for the the city of the the, 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 the mother, mother of, the mother mm -hmm. of the villages and what yeah. is around it. Okay, but this is a very small town. I mean, this is Mecca is a very small tiny place. So mm -hmm. He sent him only to that place and not to go anywhere else. So uh, Muhammad later, when he found that his he's growing by numbers, when he became victorious in the in, in his army. Mm -hmm. Then his dream expanded of to go and open branches over other countries. Otherwise, in the beginning, he was just thinking of being a prophet for the Arab around Mecca, and that's it. You know, it was a limited dream, and uh, hoping he is going to accomplish it. That, that's very true, because again, if you read chapter 26 and verse 214, he says uh, uh, that you may warn your your kinsmen who are close to you. So initially, he was just a, a warner to the Arabs. In fact, to the to the Qurayshi. Yeah, this is why this is why the Quran speak about why the Quran is in Arabic. You see, the Quran says that we never send a messenger except in the language of his people, so they might understand, and that makes sense. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. But then, uh, then we find that the, uh, Muhammad he switched contradicting himself claiming that he is a messenger for 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 the world the whole world have to convert to Islam but how uh -huh. how the Quran says we never send a messenger except in the tongue of the people which means the messenger yes have to speak. yes he have to he have to be with them and it says in Arabic <laughs> which mean his people so he have to be from the people to speak in the tongue of the people and Allah he speak about that in the time of Muhammad not later we never send. You see, he said, we never send a messenger except he speak in the tongue of his people. All right. So as long as Allah, he never send and he will not send anyone except in the tongue of his people and he have to be from his own people. So mm. then how Muhammad will be a messenger for the Persian, for the Roman, for the African, for, 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 when he don't speak any tongue except the Arab tongue, you know? That is a clear contradiction, uh -huh. and here actually, even the Quran says clearly, so so they might understand. You know, I mean, I think I think Allah was just confusing himself um, here and here and there, or maybe somebody was speaking for Allah because with all these contradictions. No, no, um, no, no. It's, it's, first of all, there is no Allah. Muhammad here, 
is 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 uh, you know trying to confirm himself as an Arabian prophet for the Arab, and this is why I'm speaking to you in that in the language which uh, you understand. I understand mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because people before they have a prophets who have spoken many languages, you know. Moses yeah. spoke many languages. Jesus spoke many languages. So why Muhammad don't speak many languages? So Muhammad here he want to confirm to them that um, Allah. He never sent any messenger except to speak in the language of his people so they might understand so why I am speaking to you in this language so you might understand because you are an mm -hmm. Arab I am an Arab so now this is an Arabian religion for the Arab mm -hmm. but, but later when he found that he is uh, uh, able to accomplish more than what he dreamed of then this verse here he forgot about it it's not mm. it's not important no more suddenly he is a prophet for all mankind and now here we are, if we ask the Muslims if you ask any Muslim he will say to you Arabic is very uh, hard language yeah that's what they say and uh, no it's not about what they say it's about what it is Arabic is very hard language you know there's a mm -hmm. lot of a grammar etc it doesn't matter how much you study still you make mm -hmm. mistakes in the grammars the grammar is very complicated the language is very uh, uh, Rich with words, you know that the, the line alone have more than three hundred names. So you will spend like uh, a year to remember them alone. So mm. uh, uh, and then you 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 speak to a Muslim today, like Zakir Naik. Uh -huh. Why and how, you know, you will be able to understand the Quran when the Quran is not your language. Zakir Naik, he might say to you, "Well, how you understand the Bible, but it's not in your language?" Well, first of all my Bible is allowed to be translated you Muslims cannot the translation of the Quran is not considered to be a Quran is considered a translation for us we consider translation as much it is as much accurate it can be we consider it still to be the Bible so I can understand yes but the Muslim he cannot understand the Quran for very simple reason even those who speak Arabic they cannot understand the Quran in Arabic so how the one who don't speak Arabic he can understand the Quran, which is written in Arabic. So even the Arabs have to study the Quran. No, no, the, the Quran confirmed that the Quran says that uh, why they cannot consider the Quran, why they cannot understand the Quran, you know? Yes. Yeah. So why they cannot uh, do that? Because simply, uh, he, he said to them, if this book is not from God, you will find a lot of uh, contradiction. Chapter 4, verse number 82. 82, yes. So why they cannot consider the Quran why they cannot understand the Quran simply because nobody can understand the Quran Muhammad himself can understand the Quran itself says that there is a huge part of the Quran nobody knows what it does mean save Allah and this is chapter 3 verse number 7 so you know? why did he bring it if we cannot understand it there's no point for sure but Muhammad because he's a thief you see if I go to you let's say you say Christian friends I want you to teach us physics okay uh -huh. now uh -huh. I don't know physics so what I do I go and get a book of somebody and I write for you what is written in the book but the second you ask me a question about why this here I say Allah knows best <laughs> I don't know I mean you know? that's funny because if you say Allah only Allah understands and then on the other verse you say <laughs> I have revealed this in Arabic that you may understand and then you go ahead and tell me I cannot understand only Allah understands so what are you trying to say simply it's not about it's not about he understand it's about muhammad himself he is just a thief he did not understand what he's saying he's a person who say things he himself he have no idea how he can explain them because he is not the one who made them most of the quran is made by someone else the verses which is about his six uh, any woman she want to give herself to him those muhammad he understand them very well now, Again, my last my last question yeah. the other day you mentioned about ishmael uh, uh israel uh jibril that that hill um is, that means uh that there is this god you know ishmael or jibril and and not jibri allah or ishmael or something like that how do they how can there be that connection between these Hebrew names 
and and Allah, the, the uh, which is see, more. This is, this is additional proof that Muhammad is nothing but a thief. Because how come il is very important word in the names which Muhammad he came with, as you see, Israel, Jibreel, Mikael, uh, um, you know, Israel, Israfil, all the names Muslims they have, it's connected to il Ishmael, but. Yet they do not know. They cannot. Not even one of them. He knows what Eel. And Muhammad himself. He never said what Eel is. You know. So Muhammad, because he thought those are one name. Like if you ask, if you ask the Muslims, if we know what Jibril mean, where we will find the answer? You know, he will say to you, we have to go to the uh, the Bible. <laughs> right away, because nobody knows what they mean. Really, this is not a. This is those are foreign names. But yet, mm -hmm. the, but yet the Quran claimed that this is a pure Arabic. So it's a pure Arabic book, but the major words in this book are not Arabic. How that can be? The Quran confirmed in many places that this is a very pure Arabic book, have no crock in it. You know, mm -hmm. chapter 12, verse number 2, chapter 13, verse number 37, mm -hmm. cha chapter 16, verse number 13. It confirm that other uh, you know uh, there's people who speak in languages they speak about different religion but they are not pure Arab we, in this book is a pure Arabic language and have no crocs in it so how Muhammad he says such a thing when the whole Quran the, including the word Quran the word Quran itself is not an Arabic word so how in the word Muhammad he claimed that this is so Arabic and so clear and so pure Arabic and have no foreign language in it when we find everything inside is a foreign hmm. you know what I challenge any Muslim to call me and to find me one thing in the Quran is Arabic <laughs> what about we do this starting from the word Mecca but but, but there's the word Bakka in the Quran even Bakka is not Arabic Bakka, Mecca, all those names are not Arabic. Including Muhammad is not Arabic. Including Isa is not Arabic. Including Allah is not Arabic. Including what? I mean, what is left? What is left? Nothing Arabic. This book have nothing to do with Arabic or Arab. You see, uh, uh, there is nothing is called Arab anyway. Uh, you know, I, I explain to people many times, Arab <laughs> are not an ethnic. It is not an ethnic group. Arab is an or is an Aramaic word itself. <laughs> the word Arab is an Aramaic word, which means those who live in the desert. So they do the the, the one who live in the desert. You know, let's say it's a it's a generic name for whoever live in the desert. From the, the they call them the savage. Those who don't take a shower once a year because they they live in a tent. They move from place to place. So like yeah. now you say. Uh, you say gypsy, you know, mm -hmm. in the old days. So Arab have nothing to do with ethnic. Whoever, whoever live in the desert, he's an Arab. This is why you see in the Bible it says that in Arabia, Arabia is what is the desert. Yeah, it's not really a location of a country. It is a desert, you know. So he live in Arabia. He's an Arabian. He's a desert merchandise. Uh, uh, they they go from town to town. They they are the same as the gypsy exactly, you know. Uh, so how did, how did we then come to have a language called Arabic? Okay, well by time, you know, this uh, uh, th there is those people who live in, in, in certain life, Bedouin life, because, uh -huh. they, because they travel from place to place, they don't have a houses to live in, so they are mixed with many other cultures. Yes. So they come back, like, you know, I go right now, I go to India, I come back, I learn a few Indian words, I start using them, especially if those things came with invention like now you live in your in you live in in, in 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 middle east still you say computer you know i mean okay mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. you 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 buy a, a phone you call it phone you know a tele telephone telephone oh. so mm -hmm. it's it's word you you learn from other nations and then they will be inserted inside your language and they will be part of it and then by time they became very in 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 the, in the core of the language so arabic arabic what we call arabic language it took a lot of time to develop and it's a mix of many many languages it's not a language by itself it's a collection of languages 
you know mm. this is why we cannot really separate Arabic from other languages especially especially Aramaic like yeah. now like now you know our, our languages is mixed around the world not only in Arabic like you when you pray as a Christian now you say I mean mm -hmm. okay most of them they say I mean but none of those words have to do with with Arabic or even with the, with the word Hebrew this is a word coming from the Aramaic mm -hmm. it's older mm -hmm. than the Hebrew so Aramaic they say I mean we say I mean which mean I agree I believe so you find yourself speaking Aramaic but you do not know that you are using Aramaic every day the letters the the, the you see they say to you as an example uh, yeah. which is a lie they say to you that the numbers the 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 numbers you use right now like one two four three four etc they say to you those are Arabian numbers this is false this is a big fat lie those are Aramaic alphabet the, yeah. Aram the Aramaic alphabet it's numbers and alphabet in the same time and through time the 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 look of those alphabet it changed you know to be more like to make it more clear to be written to be printed etc so you will find that the Aramaic the Aramaic nation is one of the most amazing powerful nation ever exist for mankind they are the first to create writing you know I heard that the Egyptian etc I believe no I believe the Aramaic is the first who you know they they they, they control um uh, like they are the first to to uh, to learn how to sail in in the ocean to make boats uh in uh, the word europe is aramaic the word africa is aramaic i mean you would be astonished if you study the language and you try to find out the roots of words you will find a lot of secrets have to do with the aramaic language so islam itself is based on aramaic like if you go and then you will find you know the Quran says Alif Lam Mim. This is stolen from the Aramaic. This is why Muslims do not know what what, what, what Alif Lam Mim mean. Kahayas, what Kahayas mean? So the Muslims are confused and they start guessing. Maybe he meant this, maybe he meant that, maybe etc. Why? Because if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, the hadith says that Waraq ibn Nufal, who is the real father of Muhammad, he was a translating a book which is what, the gospel what do you mean, what do you mean Waraka bin Nafal is the real father yeah obviously I don't know if you have my book uh, uh, if you remember in my book I, I quote the story which is mentioned by Muslim not by me that when uh, Muhammad the father of uh, supposedly the supposedly father the father of Muhammad he, yes, he, yeah he wanted to sleep with the with Amina Amina uh -huh. in the way in his way to go there the sister of Waraka, she came to him and she offered him 100 camel in order to go with her home. Hmm. Now, why in the world a woman in the middle of Norway, she is the sister of Waraka, she will offer such an, I don't believe that, uh, in that number, the 100 camel. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, hey, ladies, are there any women she want to offer me 100 camel? <laughs> what about 100 car? I mean, it's like saying 100 car at that time. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously, it's a story of exaggeration, but it doesn't yeah. matter really if it's a camel or 10 camels, but why she offer herself? And then Muhammad's father, supposedly, it's a, the supposed father, when he went and he slept with Amina, he came back and he asked her if she still, the offer is open. She said, no. You can read the mm -hmm. reference of my book. So, why she don't want him to sleep with him no more obviously she was sent by her brother to make him not to go to this woman and to take his sister because mm. obviously waraka he was sleeping with her and later we find that each time muhammad is lost they found him with waraka ibn nufal and then <laughs> later we find that when waraka ibn nufal he passed away do you, do you remember what muhammad tried to do he, he tried to commit suicide commit suicide Okay, why a person he would try to commit suicide because Waraka he died. died. Same time, why it says he became so sad to the point he tried to commit suicide, and it says that the inspiration of Allah stopped. Stop. Okay. Mm. That's mean the inspiration of Allah have to do have a connection, strong connection with the with, with the existence of Waraka. Why? Because Waraka was the one who's making Muhammad preparing him to, to run his business. Waraka he decided, you know, he, he is a is a part of a of a cult, Nasara, and he want Muhammad to carry on as Nasara. Khadija is Nasara, Waraka is Nasara, Muhammad is Nasara. 
Muhammad, mm. Muhammad did not come with a new religion. Muhammad came with a Nasara cult. So in the beginning, Muhammad, he was a Nasara. And then Muhammad trying to find a place for himself. The Nasara, they did not accept him. The Sabian did not accept him. The Jews did not accept him. Mm -hmm. But yet he is under the influence of all of them. And CP, I sometimes think that even his marriage to Hadija was a Nasara marriage. Absolutely, because uh, because uh, yeah, because uh, as I said, the, the, fa the family, all of them, they are Nasara. All of them, they are Nasara. Waraka is Nasara. Hadija is Nasara. Even the Muslim agree and they admit that they say uh, Hadija was a, a Nasara. And because uh, and and they lived together twenty five years without a second wife because Nasara marriages are, are monogamous. Hmm. There is two reasons for that because she was a Nasara and because she is in control. Yes, she was rich. She was rich and he was working for her. So when when Khadija she died, Muhammad now finally he got the money and he's free again, you know, and now he is a teenage again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but everything in Islam have yes, Islam is not a religion by itself. Islam is uh, a mix. It's like a dumpster. Everybody dumping there something. And from that dump, we make a religion. If you go in the Quran, all the stories in the Quran, you will find them is coming from the legions of other relief. Mm. Uh, like you know, the story of uh, of uh, of the uh, of of the group of people who uh, they asked their prophet to make a rock bread net and deliver a, a camel, which is a bread net. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. <laughs> what camel, red net, and rock big? So, and then Allah, He gave them the camel and He told them, don't, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, He divide the day for drinking water, blah, 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 and don't hurt the camel. And later they killed the camel. So Allah, He punished them and He He, he destroyed them. I mean, what, what, what this is about? So, stories, all the oldest stories, even the, Muslim, the, the Arab at the time of Muhammad, they keep saying to Him, this is. The legions of all the generation we heard them before you you have nothing to do with them we know that they are fairy tale you know mm -hmm. As yeah, yeah. you know yeah, yeah the fabulous of the fabulous of all days so the, if you read in the Quran you will find that this is mentioned in the Quran nine times nine times the Arab saying to Muhammad and this is when the Quran say that nine times so you can imagine how many times the Arab they said that to him mm -hmm. you know because to make it appear nine times in a book, that means that Muhammad here hear this from the Arab every day, that this is nothing but the the, the, the fabrication, the legions of all of, of, of all generation. And this is a nothing but a lie, you know? So mm -hmm. here we go, read with me. This is not else than a fabulous of men of old. This is what the Arab said to Muhammad in his lifetime. Hmm. They did not say you brought to us something we do not know. Mm -hmm. They said mm -hmm. to him, "This is a fabulous." They did not say it's just a, a story. We, they didn't even agree with the story. They told him, "This is a, this is a fairy tale story. We know it." Mm. You know, so Muhammad was collecting fairy tale stories, like like the story of uh, uh, of uh, uh, Alexander the Great who found the sun sitting in murky water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. The, there is a there is a book written long after after Alexander the Great uh, in the Middle East. I, I think it's written uh, by a Syrian writer uh, about. It's like a fiction book. It's, it's about Alexander the Great, which means you know so, sometimes fiction books they use a real figure, but it's a fiction story. You know they make, yeah. So this guy he wrote. I, I forgot the name of this person. Uh, he wrote a book about Alexander the Great. And in his book, he mentioned that Alexander the Great, he went all the way until he found where the sun set. And it's exactly as it is in the Quran. And then Muhammad, he took it, he put it in the Quran. The same as the story of the seven sleepers. The seven sleepers written by a Syrian writer. His name is uh, Al-Yaqub. Al he's, he's a bishop, Christian bishop. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not Nasara. He's a Christian, really Christian. And uh, 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 he wrote a fiction story, which is, to make the Christians, uh, the, the Christian youth, strong in faith. And, the, you know, he did not hide that this is, he did not tell them this is a miracle. No, he said, this is, this is a fiction story. But to teach the youth 
like it's separable about uh, have patient today we are under discrimination tomorrow we will be victorious so he wrote the seven sleepers muhammad he took it and he he claimed that allah told him the story <laughs> you know if you remember you know uh, uh, before we, we mentioned when when uh, if, if you go in the uh, if you go in the quran why muhammad speak about al qurnain tul qurnain mm -hmm. was muhammad asked for it or Allah told him voluntarily. No, the Quran says in chapter 18, verse number 83, they are asking thee about the man with the two horns. With the two horns, yes. and you will notice here that this is the name as mentioned in that storybook, the man with the two horn. You see, even the name is not. Have you ever heard of a guy his name is the nine the, the, the man with the two horn? Why he's a cow? <laughs> but this is this is how the person in that fiction story, which is about Alexander the Great. He was titled that because he wear a hat of uh, have two horn Roman hat, you know, for war. Mm -hmm. They wear it for war. But according to Muslim, the, the, I don't know if you if you know the explanation why this guy is called the man of the two horn. Do you know why? No, no. no, no. Well, they say that this man Azul uh, when he uh, he went to his people to tell them about to convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. All right, and when he told them to convert to Islam, his people they did beat him with the hammer in his head, and he got the first horn and he died. Mm -hmm. And then Allah He resurrected him from death. So he went again to warn them about joining Islam, and they mm -hmm. did beat him again with the hammer in his head, and he got the second horn, and that makes sense, <laughs> and he died. <laughs> <laughs> So he died twice. He died it yes. And but this is uh, this is the most funny explanation why he was called the man with the two horn. <laughs> because his people did beat him with the hammer. I mean, it, by the hammer, it's not like it's like a cartoon, Tom and Jerry. It's like they did not beat him with a sword. No, 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 with the hammer to make it like why he have a, a horn. Otherwise, how how a man he is a man with a two horn? Any, any Muslim can explain to me. And look here, the Muslim they don't translate what Dul Qurnain mean because it's a funny story, a funny name. I mean, how you can you want to call him the man with the two horn? The two horned one. They can't yeah, translate. But, that. but they can't translate that because that will make the Quran look stupid. So they keep it Dul Qurnain. So you as a foreigner, you read like Zul Qurnain. What is that? I mean, you, you, you might think this is a name. Additional proof that Muhammad is a false man. If you remember, when Muhammad speak about the father, uh, the, the father of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Azar. Azar. Okay, if you <laughs> if you read all Islamic interpretation and Islamic reading, even translation, they say they trans they translate the word Azar as if it's a name of the name <laughs> of the father of Abraham. So Abraham he said to his father Azar, all right. Mm -hmm. So now the Abdul they start squeezing their head. Ah, so the name of Abraham father is Azar. So he said to him, Azar, are you going to worship idols? But Azar is not the name of his father. This is a word in Aramaic. It's mean foolish, stupid. <laughs> this is how stupid this religion is. So what it was a stupid became the name of the father of Abraham. Why? Because this is a book stolen from the Aramaic language. They have nothing to do with it. It's an aftermarket book written by Waraq ibn Nufal. Who sometimes translate like like today? Now we you see the Muslim translated to English a hadith, and mm -hmm. then they say they they translate the whole line in English, and then suddenly they say a few words in Arabic. Why you leave it there? Because supposedly people they knew already what it says. There's no need to translate. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. here Azar, this guy he did not translate it. So the Muslim they are disconnected. They do not know what Azar means. So they thought Azar is the name of the father of uh, Abraham. Have you ever heard of somebody his father his name is foolish? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and and how how a man he will say to his father foolish and this is abraham and you know uh simply what what the story here is saying that abraham he said this is this is foolish speaking to his father saying this is foolish to worship idols and that makes sense no i i i read about uh the the birth of abraham that that when he was born he was hidden in a cave until he was like 10 years old. And then the day he got out of the cave, he saw he saw the moon and then he said, this is my my God. This is, no, he said, uh, 
he's you know he started calling this is akbar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so so uh, at that time he was aged 10 10 years and that was the first time he was coming out of uh, the no, no no there is first of all when they say this is 10 years this is a this is absolutely uh, a, a cannot be true because uh, you know how where they got the number of 10 years where they get this from i i don't know i read i read that in no no, no. In uh, uh, you know uh, uh, if if you read if you read the the verse here you see it. Mm -hmm. For yeah. that, uh, if, if we go if we go in the verses uh -huh. you will see he is debating his people he is debating his people for his 10 years all right and then uh uh if you read the story it mm -hmm. says وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ آزَرَ أَتَتَّخِذَ أَصْنَامًا أَلِهَا He said that to his father when he's 10 years. <laughs> are you going to take uh, idols that are, you know? No. And even the story says that Abraham, he destroyed the, the idols. He, so he did not destroy it when he was, because at 10 years old, he cannot destroy the idols, who they are made of rocks. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. he destroyed it, and then the conversation continued. And then, so when the night come, he saw a planet and he said this is my god this is akbar and then uh, when the planet is gone he said i don't like the one who go and then he saw the moon he said this is my, my this is my lord and then he said i don't like the one who goes and then when he saw the sun he saw the sun mm -hmm. he said this is my god this is akbar here mm -hmm. here by the way this is a very important thing about akbar i i mentioned many times that akbar is not uh -huh. is not a word meaning great in arabic today it's mean uh, bigger but here in this verse we learn a confirmation that the Sun is the only one is called Akbar Wow well that's I think CP there's a lot to learn let me let me give time for the other callers also uh, all, right. Like, yeah. all right thank you my friend for calling you're, you're welcome take care Bye. do we have any Muslim would like to call us Anyone? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? We have a person, her name is Sophie, is keeping you busy. How are you, Sophie? How are you? Do you want to call me Sophie? Sophie is a Catholic, but she thinks that Muhammad is a prophet. What a fake Catholic you, Sophie, you are. If you are a Catholic, then you should know that the Bible says, whoever deny the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. So why you are laughing at people when they say to you, Islam is an Antichrist? Sophie, how are you, Sophie? Come to daddy. You come to daddy, Zavi. All Muslims, they come to the chat and right away they play, they are Catholic. Hey brother, I am an ex Catholic. Hey brother, I am the, I used to be the Pope. If you are a Catholic, I am the Pope then. <laughs> what a joker. Yeah, you know they they uh, they are ashamed of themselves to say that they are Muslims, so they they fabricate identity. No shame. I will not be surprised if Sophie is a, is a, is Faris undercover. I mean, I am a Catholic. Yeah. Do we have any Muslim here? Anyone? And why why Islam is not Antichrist? Islam teach violent, teach hate, teach uh, killing, teach, teach rape. So isn't it, this is Antichrist teaching? Not only deny the Father and the Son, which is a clear verses in the Bible. Any any cult teach hatred and killing and violence and etc. This is Antichrist teaching. You can be an Antichrist as a person, and you can be Antichrist as teaching. Islam stand 
totally against the teaching of Jesus while Jesus you know he taught the Christians to preserve themselves and to be decent people Quran teach them to lie a Muslim he can lie to three kind of people his friends his family and his enemy who is left while Jesus he forbid the Christians from even taking an oath Muhammad he allowed them to take false oath as long as they don't mean it because Allah judge you by intention so if if your intention is to lie it's okay you take a false oath your wife she asked you did you marry another wife you say I swear by Allah I did not but he have other three wives this is law for in Islam because Allah judge you by your intention that is the devilish teaching uh, what do you think about the mathematical miracle my friend I have videos about it go watch it there's nothing is called mathematical miracle in the Quran it's a big fat lie it is a big potato lie go I have many videos go just search for them and you will find the answer now do you want me to play the video for you again I mean why I need to redo uh, the same and the same again and again you know uh, do we have any Muslim anyone No Muslim. <clears throat> See, when a Muslim he says to you that the Quran have a miracle, it's called the nineteen number miracle. Right? Did you ask yourself why Allah did not tell us the miracle Himself? This is a video go watch it I made this video to the potato Shabir Ali go watch it yeah I know that uh, Shabir Ali he mentioned that to David Wood because David Wood he do not know he did speak Arabic and this is this is the point of not speaking Arabic this is why this is why they debate people who don't speak Arabic he mentioned to him the what it's called the mathematic number of 19 and there is no way to dispute this unless you speak Arabic You know what I mean? Go watch it and, and laugh. There is no such a thing. All those numbers they calculate for you, it's fake, it's false. If you have my books, I answer about those. If you have my videos, they are there. There's I made many videos to, to get them busted. And it's very easy to get this claim busted. If a Muslim he is willing to call me right now and tell me about the miracle of number 19, I promise you it, it will not take more than two minutes to destroy this false miracle. No, he don't speak Arabic. Neither Zakir Naik, he don't speak Arabic. They claim to be scholars, but they don't speak Arabic. What the Muslims they do, they recite for you what is sound like in Arabic, but in different language. As an example, right now, I can type for you in the screen Arabic words in English letters. So when you read them, you will sound like people, they will think that you maybe you are speaking Arabic. Right? But they don't. And anyway, it doesn't matter if you like here we go. Faris, he speak Arabic. Can you call us Faris to, to talk about the miracle of number 19, brother? Is it true? Let me call Faris. That will be delicious. Let me call Faris. Go. So we can laugh. <laughs> Answering. Far is doing jihad in the bedroom. 
he have a new brand new wife any abdul i challenge any muslim and he is more than welcome to tell me about any claimed miracle in the quran you choose it we destroy it is that good what do you think anyone anything you choose it and leave the rest for me who is the muslim want to do that who want to do that miracle number 19 17 18 i don't care you you just tell me you ask me the question you like me to ask you and we will go for it yeah we can talk about the inheritance in islam but that will will make many people dizzy <laughs> Any Abdul? What do you think? Who is a Muslim would like to call us, please? You see, there is a. If you if you have my my books, like especially the second book, Quran and Science, the whole book is about what the Muslim claim to be science in the Quran. Which is absolutely a, 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 a joke. What the Muslims do in order to make you believe that this is a book of science is fabricating the meaning and the translation. Let me do this. Hold on, just to give you an example. Let me find the Muslim website which is speaking about those funny stuff. Uh, scientific. Miracles in the Quran. <coughs> All right, here we go. We have this website. Now, I challenge any Muslim to call me and to choose any of those who they are listed in their website. The Quran, the book of Islam contains scientific knowledge that could not have been known 1400 years ago brother unbelievable this is in the quran this is in the quran where who is the muslim want to show me that which one is the choice the mosquito the quran spoke about the miracle of mosquito this is a new I don't remember. I saw this one. This is a new one. They added. Let us see the mosquito one. You guys, do you want to see the mosquito one? This is interesting. The Quran speak. Uh, there is a scientific miracle about the mosquito. I assure you that the mosquito miracle is misquoted. <laughs> oh. Mosquito have their own part. Parasites. If 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 this is in the Quran, the Quran speak about that. Where? Read with me. They are flying parasites that suck the blood from mosquitoes. The Quran say that. That's that's amazing. That's wow. The Quran says that. Let us see. Let us see. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, okay. The Quran says, Allah does not shy anyway. From making an example of a mosquito and what is up above it. <laughs> and this is about the parasite who they are sucking the blood of the mosquito. <laughs> but the verse here is saying that Allah is not shy to give an example. This is why it says examples, it's in front of you. Even if it's a mosquito and what above in size, you idiot liars. Do you want us to go and read the, the interpretation? Why Muslims you lie? Allah is not shy to the point he is willing to give you an example, even if it's about a mosquito and what is above, above in size, liars. He's not saying there is something above the mosquito. Unbelievable. Any Muslim here, he want to take a challenge so we can go and read the interpretation right now. Either you accept the challenge or you admit that you Muslims are lying when you say that this is a scientific miracle. Who want to do that? Is that fair, guys? Is that fair? 
we will go and read all Islamic interpretation you will not find even one of them saying that hello any Muslim want to do that bad boys bad boys what you gonna do what you gonna do when I come for you bad boys bad boys any Abdul do you want us to go to Ibn Kathir as an example or a Jalalain or a Tabari? Hmm? Or, 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 which interpretation you Muslim you choose to prove to us that this is what the Quran meant? Why you are lying? If we go here. <coughs> Oh, where is the? There we go. Tafsir. The tafsir of the Muslims will expose the Muslims. Ta 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 ta. -ta. <laughs> Allah spoke about what is living in top of mosquito. Really? He did that? If, 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 if. Truly, 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 this is very deep. Let us read together. Who is a Muslim when I call us and read for us? Why you lie? It's a clear evidence that those who they are following a false God, they will lie. A person who is following the true God, he will not fabricate a lie to prove a point. Why you lie? Any Abdul? Who wanna call and read for us what Ibn Kathir said? <clears throat> Anyone? Anyone? Nobody? Mm, how sad. Read with me carefully, guys. Read with me carefully. This is not my interpretation. This is what the Quran meant. Verily, Allah is not ashamed to set forth a parable even of a mosquito, so much more when it is bigger or less, it is smaller than it. That you see it? Have nothing to do with that something is riding the mosquito, Paris. What is this about? I mean, you cannot find one decent Muslims making a decent claim about Islam. Do you see the meaning? Suddenly this is became that there is something living in the top of the mosquito, brother. When the Arabic is so clear that Allah is not ashamed to give an example, a parable about even a mosquito and what is above. And I don't know why Allah will not make a parable about something smaller. Like is the mosquito is the smallest in this earth? As long as we are talking about this, let me give you another example. Have you ever heard the Muslims speaking about that the Quran speak about uh, nuclear? Autumn? Autumn? They say to you, Allah, he knows about this before the scientist knows. Look what the Quran says. In Arabic it says, Adharrah. Inna Allah la yadhlimu mithqala adharrah. Chapter 4, verse number 40. How Allah He speak about this? Mithqala dharra? Huh? Read chapter 34, verse number 3. He keeps repeating himself because he has nothing to say. Hmm? It's all over. Chapter 34, verse number 22. The same word. Chapter 99, verse number 7. Chapter 99, verse number 8. But if you go to the Muslim article, they will say that Allah He spoke about the uh, newton and the uh, the that you know the uh the pro what they call them i forgot man uh you know it was many years since i took my 7 bhd in 7 11 nuclear facility and uh, making uh, bombs uh, is it really muslims this is speaking about nuclear or this is about an ant the word dharra in arabic is an ant ant have nothing to do 
with the proton and a neutron and atom and the nuclear it is about an ant liar you made the ant a nuclear weapon it is an ant the ant in the quran became a nuclear discovery guys just forget this uh, sophie let me let me block her she is just you know some people looking for attention anyway her husband he have only one wife how he know he's allowed and why he have only one wife what is something wrong with him his his uh, you know he is a muslim he's allowed to have four of you Are you saying that he is a good Muslim? Obviously he's not, because a good Muslim should have four women. Allah in the Quran says, go and F2 and a three and four. And if you cannot afford it, then one. So obviously he cannot afford more. <laughs> if you cannot afford it, then you do one. Hmm. Look like you are making his credit card empty always. This is why he cannot afford it. Or maybe he have, a, he have an extra wives in Jordan. You go on vacation. I, you know, I, I met a, a woman, an American woman. She married to a Muslim guy. She said to me, I live with him many years, and every year he go to go vacation. And lately he became going vacation like every few months to his country in Jordan. And later I discovered, because my daughter who went there with him, she discovered that he have two wives there. Young wives, not like his wife, American wife. Halal, halal, halal. All is halal. He's not a cheating. He's allowed to lie to you, not to tell you that he is married. There's a fatwa. There, you know, you can go and search for it right now in English. The women she is asking that my husband, he went, I think it was a, to, to Jordan too, uh, or I don't know what country. Uh, and uh, he is lying to me. Uh, I keep asking him if he married another woman so that the sheikh is saying to her, why are you even asking him? What if he say yes? What you can do about it? <laughs> why are you asking him? <laughs> You have no right to know as long he is doing his duty with you as a husband shut up you are just a goat he sleep with you cook for him that's it any abdul so here we go this is an additional example the word dharra became an autumn but the fact the word dharra is an ant. I will show you chapter 34, verse number 22. Let us go. 34. Verse number 22. Does it mean really an ant? <clears throat> oh, read with me here. Here, this guy he translated as they possess not even the weight of a speak of dust, either in heaven or in earth. This is a translation. Let us show you more. Go here. At Tafsir, official Islamic government website, the government of Jordan. And we will go to chapter 34, verse number 2. 22, sorry. Is it really an ant? Let us see. Say, oh, uh, this believer of Mecca called those who asserted those of you, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, look here, he translated the word of an atom. That's false. Let us get them busted. What atom? It is an ant, you liar. 
here they translate it to as an ant as, a, as an atom it is an ant you liar who want to bet that it is an ant all what we need to do we change to Arabic Arabic this is a tabari ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. who is a Muslim would like to call us who is a Muslim would like to call us and read for us does it say really it's an ant and explain to us why you Muslims lie. Any Abdul? It is really, really disgusting. The Ra simply is a word mean namla any muslim want to take a challenge liars liars will end in fire what a shameful cult who they are willing to lie to claim something is not exist. And you must want to do so. No Muslim wanna call. My Skype is open, but nobody wanna call. Oh. Very disappointing, very, very. <clears throat> Any Abdul? Nobody. You see, I like always. I uh, I notice how Muslims, when they try to prevent to present something about Islam, uh, you know, they try to present Islam is made by some Muslim Abdul in YouTube today, not Islam, not the version of Islam which is made by the scholars who they are, the the where where. All Muslims agree that this is where the knowledge is coming from. Suddenly, a book written by Harun Yahya, who is in jail right now for for he being accused of a human trafficking and having involving prostitution with the children, he is the one who started this wave of uh, science in the Quran. That's why you see his name is mentioned in my book. Any Muslim would like to call me? Read with me carefully. لا يقدرون لا يقدرون على مثقال ذرة يعني أصغر وزن النمل. He meant the lowest weight of an ant. Do you see it? Why you made this about nuclear and about etc.? It's an ant. ذرة is a small small ant. This is why in Arabic we say the rari, which means the children's, you know, baby ants. So that goes even for a human. Any Abdul? Not even one Abdul? So today we got lucky only with legendary Faris, who tried to, he challenged me to read the chapter, Matthew chapter 34, which we cannot find. It says in chapter Matthew chapter 34, brother. What? Is, are you sure? 
I'm so glad he did not say chapter 49. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? <clears throat> Anyone? Maybe, maybe. I have a Mikey Mouse phone, so I cannot get. I mean, this is look at this. I have Mikey Mouse phone, so I cannot get Skype. That is something. I never heard of Mikey Mouse. Is that, is that a new brand? This Muslim, he had Mikey Mouse phone. Anyway, well, look like there is no Muslim. He is even willing to ask us the question, so we can ask him the question which he is asking us. Yeah, you can call me if you are not Muslim. No problem. Go ahead. We will give it five minutes more. Anyone want to call? Mayday, mayday. We are out of Abdul. Anyway, tomorrow I will I will try to uh, do podcast. I have some work to do. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Um, okay. I didn't think I was gonna call like ever. I I follow you on YouTube. All right. And I also joined Patreon under you. Thank you very much for that. And um, I've been listening to you maybe for fifth, uh, fifteen months now. Fifteen months. Yes. 15 months you know what if i listen to myself for 15 months i will commit suicide <laughs> no way um actually i feel like uh okay how do i say this i don't want to take up too much of your time but no no it's okay we have nothing else see there's no abdul waiting so take your time no no problem speak as much as you want if one wants to call you i'll get off the phone right away. no problem don't, don't worry nobody's calling anyway they are scared um, yeah uh so I was really freaked out a long time ago when um, ISIS appeared on the scene. I don't have any Muslim friends or anything, but I did maybe when I was in middle school and I didn't know very much about Islam at all. And um, I'd say the level of freaked out I was, was I call it like almost a derangement syndrome <laughs> in a sense. I live in Toronto, Canada, and uh, right now we're having a very serious immigration problem. Um, I, I used to see maybe a hijab once a month. I see it five a day these days. Yeah, because that you doesn't have, bother me. You have a prime minister who's an idiot. Yeah, he is. He is, and um, I would say he's not going to win the next election unless there's funny business going on with uh, elections Canada. He won't win. Um, there are many people who are upset about this. Well, he made the, the Minister of Immigration a Muslim, so what do you expect? Yeah. They are controlling the border now. The, the, the border, the one who gives visas and uh, entry for everybody is a Muslim. Yeah, and the Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated. Like, there are a lot of, um, there are some ministers who are Muslim Brotherhood as well. Yeah, see? That's it. Yeah, but what I want to say is, um, so I got freaked out about... Uh, ISIS and then I started paying closer attention to what people were saying and I started to listen to Bill Warner and Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller and even though they kind of like tell it as it is what Islam is very bluntly very frank frankly there was still a kind of reverence for it like um, in their voice like like if Islam was this huge monster that was gonna just overrun everything and take over the whole world and it didn't really solve the anxiety I was feeling at the time, the dere ISIS derangement syndrome maybe. So um, then I discovered you online and I think the type, like you showed, you exposed Islam in a different way than they do in a sense that you, you, you can 
show us exactly what's written in that book. And um, I would say my anxiety was gone after that. Like I became almost addicted to listening and learning um, with you. So that was really great. And I want to say thank you for that. Well, thank you very much, uh, my friend. And you know, <clears throat> uh, you should not have uh, any anxiety. I know that it's stressful to see the news and what's happening. But the world is full of uh, many garbage. It's not only Islam is the bad things. Like now, I heard in in Canada they legalize marijuana. And imagine you will you will be driving your car next to somebody. He's driving his car, but he's high. You yeah. Know? I mean, how they can allow that? So. Well, someone already got a ticket, like a six hundred dollar ticket for driving in um. Yeah. Under uh, what, what you expect? I mean, uh, when you have a uh, when you have a guy like this guy to be a prime minister, the the whole country will be screwed. This is why it's very important. In the time of election that those who care for their country not to stay home and go and vote otherwise yeah. you will get an idiot in the office he will screw your life yeah. yeah now i advise you not to be scared of this cult of islam it's very weak islam is strong as long we are ignorant mm -hmm. when it, when people they are ignorant then islam can can play the game they can rule you they can take over you they can they can they can because simply you are ignorant and uh, uh, ignorance is the easiest way uh, to to die let us say you see mm -hmm. uh, people these days they are dying because of cancer time will come and mm -hmm. cancer will be one of the easiest illness to heal time will come you will see but until they find out what is the problem how they can fight cancer millions and millions and millions of people will die the same as what happened uh, like when Europe used to die by the flu by millions it's just a stupid flu. So Islam is the same as the flu. Mm. All what you need is a doctor who teach you how to fight the flu. Discover for you what is the problem and where is the problem. And then you will find out how easy to fight and to destroy the flu. And this is what we are doing here. And I believe any one of you now, he can debate a Muslim easy. You do not yeah. need to be... You know, you you have a lot of knowledge. Like you are you're saying to me, you are listening for fifteen uh, months. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a long period of time. So I'm sure you learned a lot. I so, did. I I teach English to um to Korean students, adult students who are here studying for a year, and the topic comes up because they've experienced seeing like recently they have the whole Jeju Island and the Yemenis that have mm. um using the the immigration. Look like loop. guys. Look like guys. Today I won the lotto. She teach English. Ah, so I need your help. Why you don't really actually. You're a very eloquent speaker. No, no, I'm saying I need your help. Maybe you can help me with the grammars in my books. I could do that. No problem. You will not charge me? Never. Yeah. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm poor. I will go homeless if you say I want, I want you to pay me. <laughs> All right. I never charge you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, I need like somebody who can really, because, you know, English is not my first language. And for sure, I will make, I make mistakes when I'm... Uh, uh, I'm writing. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, I will be happy if you can help. But uh, always, always remember one thing: that you see why people they fear dark. What is what is special about dark? It's that we cannot. We don't see where we step. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you might step in in a place. You, you might fail. You might, it might be a hole. It might be uh, over edge of a rock of a mountain. So because it is dark, you have fear. But dark itself, nothing changed. I mean, the, the same atmosphere around us is the same. The same land is around us, but because it's dark, we do not see. And because we do not see, we are not sure. And when we are not sure, we make bad mistakes. Mm -hmm. So Islam is the same as everything around us, many bad things around us. But because we are in the dark, we do not know what it is. So they can play their games and they can come to you they can penetrate the system so they try to present themselves as a good religion teaching humanitarian teaching love and uh, equality and blah blah islam protect the women islam is not uh, violent islam mean peace all these things because we are in the dark but the second we overcome the dark white knowledge you see when the messiah he said i am the truth he just confirmed to you how important it is to know the truth not just to follow not just to believe in something there's a huge difference between if somebody is a believer and somebody is believing in the truth so he is not just teaching the truth I am the truth 
so when I believe in the Messiah I am it's required in 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 for us as a Christian to read the books that's what Jesus said read the books search the books it's written he keeps saying to the Jews it's written so why we Christian we do not need to read and we do not want to learn why we are copy paste learning from others about what 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 is what what somebody says in the church they say to us uh, some false Christian they say uh, Islam is an Abrahamic religion that is a big fat lie ask him how he can how he can be Abrahamic do he teach the teaching of Abraham did Abraham kiss his stones and go around the stones did Abraham go around the Kaaba did Abraham teach to go and rape and kill did Abraham says you can you can you can lie you know so I mean what would the teaching of Abraham Jesus he said to them if you are of of your father Abraham you do the work of your father and Jesus said that from their fruits you shall know them so we as a Christian we we are required to stand up for the truth and not to be just people who watch and in order to do that you have to educate yourself you have to learn we don't want to insult the Muslims you know we earn nothing from insult but we have to say the truth and if the truth is an insult to someone that is his business that is his problem but we don't we don't want to insult anyone you know for me when I speak about Islam I'm not trying to insult any Muslim I'm trying to state this you know the, the truth when I say they are saying uh, uh, the Quran full of miracles it's a lie I'm not accusing anyone of lying I'm saying he is a liar and I prove it so don't you know don't be afraid of this cult let this cult afraid of you and how that can be is you being educated and I can tell you are a smart lady and you know you will you are learning fast and I'm sure by what you do like teaching others maybe you can uh, uh, share knowledge from time to time teaching is a very important uh, a tool uh, mm -hmm. to reach out to people because you get opportunity other people don't have you are a teacher you know mm -hmm. that's why most they try to work as teachers in the West because they can penetrate the mind of Christian children's you bring a Muslim teacher to teach Christians the first thing he will start saying he start right away promoting his cult mm. and then a child he'll go to his, his home and his home he have a parents who don't teach him anything they, they themselves they have no, no knowledge so the child will be later easy fish for this teacher to brainwash him and it's why we saw many children sadly who they are children of Western people in the West like in Australia the story of the guy who is 16 years old kid who his family suddenly did he disappeared from the home and then after two weeks he appeared to be in Syria doing suicide bombing how this happened it was the school in the school he joined Muslims group and they taught him that Islam is the best religion and the Christianity is false and the Western are, are doomed and they are filthy and you should etc and join us he joined them and then right away they smuggle him to go all the way from Australia all the way to Syria and here you will notice how powerful the evil is to smuggle a child how a child under the age of 16 was able to go all the way from Australia all the way to Syria and nobody stop him how he was able to pass all the airports how he can fly alone how, how come no police ask him how come you are 16 years old do you have a permission to to fly alone where's your parents so they they are very very aggressive and if they want to hunt somebody and this but if this person he have no protection of family education etc he will be an easy fish for them this is why we need to teach our children and we need to share whatever we learn here with our friends so I encourage you my friend uh, 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 when you speak to ladies and around your friends you, you know share what you learn and if any one of them he have a question he don't believe that you are telling the truth or let us say they don't agree with you ask them to join us here and they are free to ask us any questions and they will be happy to answer all right okay. anything okay. else um that's about it all right thank you very much for calling I'm feel free to call again all right I will. all right thank you thank you Okay. You see, Islam is a very easy cult to fight. It is the easiest cult to fight. I cannot believe how easy it is. But the problem is, 
how I can fight something I don't know you see if if somebody told me tomorrow we are going to bring you a big name scholar to debate you I will not even spend one minute to prepare prepare for what this is the most stupid cult ever a person coming to me to debate me about God who will make his penis endless he will give him 80,000 women to sleep with <laughs> how he can win a debate <laughs> hello hi CP hi hi how are you I'm good and I'm sorry everybody in the comments it's not an Abdul <laughs> All right. um, I have a question um, if you could go to sunnah.com and um, I was debating a Muslim and, and it says lightly beat them they're the women mm -hmm. now a beating is a beating <laughs> so, um, but when I was reading it and I looked at the Arabic it actually doesn't say lightly beat them it says um, beat them severely so I was just wondering if you could um, read it in Arabic and, and tell me what it says first of all I want to I want to uh, you know when we when we debate a Muslim and he speak about this topic let us say he just said beat them lightly all right okay the second you the second he agree let us go what we he agree first he agreed that this is light beating let us say it's a spit. I mean, how light it can be more than a spit. Right. Anyone like anyone to spit at him? No. So he is saying to us that his God, he gave the man permission to spit at the women? Pretty much. Because let us say it is the most light, in, light beating ever because the second you are saying to me, I can beat her, it doesn't matter how it is. It's mean I am the one who is in charge and she is the one who is subdued and she is the one she is not even equal to me and she is not even an adult because I'm beating her to do what to punish her to teach her how to behave so it doesn't matter really how harsh the beating is what the Quran said is extremely dangerous and extremely ugly who like to see his father beating his mother I don't like to see that I will hate my father if he is doing that who which like, has um, hmm? which has the supreme authority here would it be Muhammad or would it be the Quran uh, well at, at the end of the day the Quran is the word of Muhammad and Muhammad <laughs> is the Quran, I know? mean like to a Muslim <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the whole Quran, you see, actually, the story of the Quran in chapter 4, verse number 34, where nowhere in Arabic it says lightly as they lie, but let us say it says lightly, you know, but let us see how lightly it is. Here, the story in front of us in Sahih al Bukhari, and this is a Sahih hadith, and this is what is behind that this verse to come that a woman, her husband, did beat her until her clothes, uh, that, sorry, until her skin became greener than her clothes. So right. how much how much light the beating was to the point her her skin is a greener than her clothes. Read with me, Muslim, carefully. This is okay. Aisha speaking, not me. So don't accuse me of lying. Obviously, Aisha must be lying. So the woman she came spoke to Aisha, and Aisha she said that a lady came wearing a green veil com and complained to her, which means Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin. Caused by beating, not biting, beating. It was a habit of ladies to support each other. Uh -huh. So now they are explaining to you why Aisha is taking the side of the women. Not because she's right. You see, you see, you see the, the way that they, they, they present the story for you? They're trying to present to you that here Aisha is not because she is right, she is saying that, but because it's women, they support each other, you know. So, so when Allah Messenger came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman. What does that mean? Aisha, she is witnessing right now that the most women who suffer is a believing woman. It's a Muslim woman. She never saw between women who live around anyone suffer as much a Muslim woman. Why? Read carefully. Look, her skin 
is greener than her clothes. And then the story continue. And later we find in the story that this woman, she married this man because Muhammad, he made a rule. If the husband, he divorced his wife three times, she cannot get back to her previous husband unless she go and sleep with a new or marry a new husband. So now this new husband, she don't want to marry him really, but she thought she will marry him and she will make him hate her. She will not sleep with him. So he would divorce her so she can go back to her previous husband. But the man, he insists she want to have sex with her. So he did beat her and then when she went to the prophet look what muhammad he did muhammad he did not question why did you did beat her even though Aisha, she mentioned to him already that her skin is a greener than her clothes muhammad he took the side of the man and he said to the woman look if your intention to go back to your husband rifa hmm, if this is your intention you should know that you cannot Go back and list this man. He tastes your juice and you taste his juice. And look how ugly the language is. So Muhammad here, he took the side of a man who did beat his wife until her skin became a greener than her clothes. So when a Muslim, he says that Islam teach that you can beat the wife lightly. That first is an insult to women. And there's no woman who respect himself, herself except such a thing. And there's no man actually respect himself except even to beat a woman. I mean, uh, uh, a man he beat a woman obviously is a, you know he, he's a. I don't know what to say. I mean, he's not a man. If no. you if you are a person who wanna who, who like to beat people, will go and find a man in your size, in your size. Not somebody is like a, you are ten foot and he is five foot. Find somebody is equal to you. He's a male. He like to fight. And fight with him, a fighter, you know, find a fighter like you. You, you, know, you are a hero. But a man who beat his wife, obviously, he have, he's a coward. And usually, those who beat their women, they are people who, men, they beat them outside. So he go inside the house to find himself to be a man again. He want to earn his respect again. So he cannot find himself respected outside. So he tried to be respected indoor. So what he do? He use violence with his wife and children. So what I get from the Muslims is that, um, well, this is his, this was like when he was dying, this was the last, um, you know, the last hadith, and it was to be kind to women. And um, but <laughs> when I read, when I read it, it's, it says, like I said, I, when I was reading it, I translated the Arabic, it actually says to beat them severely. I don't, I didn't see beat them lightly anywhere in that. Um, so I just I, I was like, you know, where I can't I can't translate it except for, you know, through my translator and what I know of of what the Arabic actually says. I'll um, I'll share it. There's no way. The, there, first of all, there's nowhere it says the word weak. It's a lie. This is the edit in the translation. Secondly, even if it is weak uh, uh, or light, sorry, light beating, right. it is an insult and there is no reason to do so and that oh, will no, not make it that a was good exactly family. the point that i had brought up too i'm going to share it in the chat um but that's the one and and like i said when i when i translated it says to beat them and you severely know, <laughs> you need to focus on one thing what is the purpose of this beating do you remember what is the purpose the purpose yes, is for to make obedience. them to make obey yeah to obey so it's obviously it's a way of violence because if you just beat her lightly and the women she don't obey you know, I mean, so what, what, what this beating would do exactly if she is, if it is light beating, what is the purpose of this beating is to force her to obey. If it is a light beating, as he claimed, which means it doesn't do any harm. Well, then she will not obey and nothing change. And the Quran make it clear. And you see here in the translation, they add the word lightly, which is a false translation. Okay. But if this is lightly. But the Quran is so clear is to force them to be obedience is not just to beat them it's just to beat them to make them obey so if the light beating is the way to make them obey that is a stupid because no woman will obey her husband because he just uh, touch her with his uh, toothbrush as they, as they claim don't, don't they say you beat we beat the women with toothbrush Okay. Yeah, with like I have a wife. She is not obeying me. Let us say I have a wife. She doesn't start obeying me. I will beat her with a toothbrush. She will be tickling. 
I mean, this is even stupid solution. Are you saying to me that Allah is stupid? Because what they are saying to me, you make your wife tickle and laugh in order to make her obedient. But the whole, the, 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 the purpose of the verse is to punish her by beating. What toothbrush? When I beat a woman with toothbrush, she would obey me? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Imagine, imagine, guys, we are we are doing a strike against whatever in the street, and the police came and they are holding toothbrush. What do you think will happen? <laughs> imagine the police is coming and they want to beat us. Trump, he said, beat them lightly. <laughs> and all the police, they are holding toothbrush in their hand. I mean, this is, will be the most funny strike ever and it will be the most funny police ever. So when they say to us, beat them with toothbrush, this is the most stupid, funny lie. They say to you that the prophet, he said, beat them with the miswak. The miswak is a long root. It's a tree root. It's a very harmful. You see that the miswak is not the same, the one inch you see today. This is because of the business growing. Everybody is buying the miswak to clean their teeth as Muhammad he used to do supposedly. <laughs> But uh, the, the, the miswak is a very long root grow under the ground, which is very harmful and very flexible. And it's not short. Let me see if I can show you some pictures of the miswak. So I think it actually says to, to scourge your, your wives. To scourge them, right. If you change the yeah. translator, if you change the translator, if you go to, uh, you see, and even the, uh, this is why we say Muslim translate, translation is a lie. You change the translator, you will find the translation saying something totally different. Like, here we go. If we go. Here. And we go. We just change the translator. You will see it's not lightly. Suddenly, it became scourge them. This is translation of use of, of big time. Here we go. You see it? So where is the word lightly disappear? We cannot find it. In the other translation, it says lightly because they lie. They are trying just to fabricate a meaning. It's not there. You know, uh, I'm trying to find you the 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 miswak in the images in Google. Let us see. It's a it's a tree it's a tree root, and you know tree roots. All of you, you know that the tree uh, the roots is very flexible. It's like a it's like a belt. It's like a leather belt. So they used to beat the animals with it. The same time the shepherd who, who, who beat his camel with and he beat his animal with, it's the same stick. He put it in the, the end of it. He put it in his mouth. And he, you know, he start uh, uh, like scrap his uh, his teeth with it. This is what Miswak is. It's not, it's not a small, tiny thing. Let me see. I'm trying to find you. Uh... The whole thing before they cut it off. Well, uh, here we go. Let us see this one first. Okay. Do you see it, guys? It's a root. It's a long root. And then they cut it off pieces. You notice that this is not the whole piece. It's cut off. Do you see how it is? This is the miswak. And that is the tree in the back. It is where they take it from. The miswak is the roots down under the, the the sand it's not the branch in the top so they dig in down in this this tree or this bushes and they take the roots which is very flexible and then they cut it pieces to sell it to muslims today but in the time of muhammad it's for free anybody can grab it and now it's a business now it's you know they they cut it they sell it and people they buy it because supposedly muhammad he said that and i'm trying to find you uh, like uh, a long, uh, like the original uh, uh, picture of the roots. You see how it is? It's a long, long root. It's not. It's not what they say, but they cut it pieces. You see how it is? This is the miswak. Very flexible roots. They grow under the ground, and then they cut them pieces and they made them for sale. But this is not how it is. This is after they cut it off. This is how it is today because they sell each one of them for a good money. Those hajjaj, the one who go to, to visit the Kaaba, they go and buy the miswak and they bring them home and they cost them a lot of money. They are expensive today. So 
uh, uh, today it's a big business in Saudi Arabia they grow this roots so those who come to visit Mecca they buy it and because it became expensive so now they cut them small and give them out but in fact they are long branch grow under the ground and then before they never cut them out like this they use it as a belt to beat the animal with it remember Saudi Arabia is not a country where there is uh, wood and etc so uh, uh, and they, they and they grow and they this is how they live you know they are Bedouin who have their animals so those roots are very useful to beat the animals or to to drive the the, the cattle from a place to place so the shepherd he carry it always with him or you are sitting in the top of the camel so you beat the camel with it so he rush and he run so maybe Muhammad meant to just beat them only until they're purple and not green well purple and green <laughs> 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 what a stupid religion and you know what the point if my wife obey me because I did beat her I mean this is not obedience you know this is not obedience this is just I'm, I'm enforcing something the second she get her freedom from me she would do the opposite and this is why Muslim women they cheat a lot of their husbands because the husband he is tough on them he is harsh on them he beat them so the second they get their freedom they do something wrong this is why Muhammad he ordered the Muslims that when they go if they are coming back from jihad they should not go directly to the house he told them you have to send a message to your wife before you go so nothing wrong will happen there's a there's a Muslim Sheikh in the Egyptian TV they ask him what was the wisdom of this he said well imagine you are coming home from jihad and then you find that your, your wife she have a boyfriend and you cannot even prove it because you need four witnesses <laughs> you open the door suddenly and you find your wife sleeping with the guy in the bed and you don't have four witnesses so what you can do here we go so he said the Prophet is doing you a favor you send them as a messenger knock at the door to your wife say hey and even he forbid them to go to their houses and during the night time because I mean why why you forbid the husband not to go to his wife during night time I'm coming from trouble I cannot go to my wife during night time yeah because what if she have a boyfriend there so you go in the morning you you deliver a message at night you send somebody he knock at the door he don't get in he tell the wife your husband is here he's in town tomorrow he'll come in here the Muslim some Muslim they explain no the Prophet he was trying to teach the Muslim women that uh, uh, to give her a chance to comb her hair to take a shower the husband is coming so he will not see her look ugly I mean this is the most stupid explanation ever the Muslim cleric he explained better he said what if you came and your wife she have a boyfriend if you remember in the hadith uh, where where a man he came and he complained to Muhammad and he said to him my wife she never stop any man from touching her which means she never stop a man from sleeping with her uh, if we go here what Muhammad said this is the morality of Muhammad look what he said read with me carefully guys this is the ethic of the Prophet of Islam a man came to the prophet s a w s mercedes benz he said my wife does not prevent uh, the uh, the hand the hand of a man which means any man and no doesn't matter really she never anyone want to touch her anywhere he is welcome you know he said divorce her who said that muhammad he then said the guy the husband i am afraid my inner self make uh, uh, covet her he said then enjoy her <laughs> which means enjoy her with the rest of the men <laughs> you know this is the ethic of Muhammad why Muhammad here did not say beat her uh, probably because he condones prostitution <laughs> Be because maybe he is the one who is doing that oh probably you know you see what is the ethic you know a prophet of God who the, taught us the, the ethic the Muslim they say that the, the ethic is the best man of ethic is Muhammad how the best ethical man he said to a man enjoy her with the rest of 
other men who they are not the husband where is the ethic why he didn't say oh let us uh, make a court that's sharia law where is sharia law oh you know here muhammad is uh, relax because muhammad is a false prophet he forced he forced the women so we can beat them so he can give himself and the rest the authority to be superior over women but he don't care really for ethic if you remember muhammad himself he went to the house of his own son when the husband was away and he flirted with zainab which is the wife of his own son he flirted with her and he said praise be to allah the one who made my heart flip for you so how a man who go and flirt and obviously he slept with her before she became in his bed uh, as a wife supposedly uh, how a man like this he flirt with married women when she is married and he is a prophet he can teach us the ethic you see in the old testament we learn that david was a person of sin and he commits sin and even he sent a man to war so he might the husband he might die and then he will take the wife but david he cry he asked god for forgiveness he cry out for his sin muhammad it sin is a lifestyle for him it's an ethic and this is why we cannot compare between the sin of david and the, th the sin of muhammad there's a person who commits sin but he regret and he feel guilty and he asks for forgiveness and there is a person who teach people sin and he claim that sin is a way of life and now the Muslims they are practicing the sin of Muhammad as a way of life I beat my wife they don't think it is sin it's a way of life women need to learn how to behave so what we do we beat them we punish them we jail them in their rooms as if they are goats and then the women she always have to be obedience not by convention like i speak to my wife i convince her no i beat her in order to be subdued in that same hadith i was telling you that it says to um beat them lightly it also says to keep them as uh captives or prisoners yeah the verse says you jail them in their rooms you know you jail them yeah. in the room and you stop having sex with them and here you, you need to remember there's no limitation for this he can jail her in his room for maybe a year maybe two years it's up to him and he can stop having sex with her uh, remember the muslim man he had many wives so he always have a, other options but the women she have no options so now he jailed her he beat her he don't have sex with her and all of this because she is disobedient In the same time, what if the man is a bad person? Any Muslim can show me where in the Quran, where in the Hadith it says that if a man he is a bad person, the woman she can do the same to her husband. Any Muslim? Don't tell me that all men are good. You see, let me show you something, show you the hypocrisy of Muhammad. <clears throat> Why we can beat the women in Islam? Because they do no shoes. If we go to the Quran and read the word, what the Muslims, what what the what the was woman here, what she is doing exactly? Read carefully with me. It says, Okay, what what they did? The word is nushud. So if we take the exact word and we search in the Quran, we will find Muhammad himself doing the shoes. Muhammad himself doing the shoes. And what is the solution for Muhammad doing the shoes? Nothing. The wife she gave her right to Muhammad because he is doing the shoes. In the case of a Muslim woman, if she is doing the shoes, we beat her. If we search for the same word in the Quran, watch with me. Copy paste. Same exact word, we will see it appearing in the Quran twice. Chapter 4, verse number 34. Chapter 4, verse 128. In the case of a chapter 4, 34, where the women doing the shoes, as we see here, we beat the women just for doing the shoes. If the man doing the shoes, the woman, she is going to lose her right. 
وإن امرأة خافت من بعلها نشودا أو إعراضا فلا جناح عليهما. Okay. If a woman she is afraid that her husband will do nishuz or he don't like her no more, it is not a problem for them if they have an agreement. And what is the agreement? The woman she will give out her right. She will give her right out. She will lose her right. In the case of the woman, she is doing the same act, the shoes. We beat her. If the man, he is doing the shoes, the woman, she lose her right. Where is the wisdom and where is the justice? And I, I had read about that in um, The Deception of Allah. You actually have that in your book. Um, one more thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. I have to go feed my kids. So, um, I did message you that there's somebody that wants to translate your book into Spanish. So if you could just check your messages for me. And Well, um, there's and many people, they message me those messages. But I don't take them seriously because many people, they promise, but they never do. Okay. So, He's, he said he'd do it for free. Yeah. And um, he's called me a couple of times about it, so I think he's pretty serious. <laughs> but right. I told him to to message you, and I sent you his um, Skype. So, uh, all right, well, we will see. All right, well, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, dear sister, for calling. All right, God bless. Yeah, Bye -bye. and uh, 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 you know, we need to open a class to teach women how, to, how uh, men how to beat their wife light, lightly. Do you think Muslim they will join the <laughs> class? <laughs> Actually, hold on. There's a book you can search it on the BBC. And the BBC News, I saw it. A guy was sentenced into six months in jail, I think in Spain, for writing a book about how to beat your wife without leaving marks because they live in the West. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, honest to God, he made a book and look what he's teaching them. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's telling them, okay, you, we live in the West and the wife, she if she called the police and they found mark in her body, then you go to jail. So what you do? So he, he made a book to teach them how with pictures how to be the wife like you make a board and you insert the board under her panty and then you beat her which will cause pain what will not leave marks like you know the cardboard you know the cardboard the, the one you like four boxes you know i think i had seen something like that yeah. so um, they insert the those uh, cardboard under under the clothes and then he spank her or beat her by his uh, uh, leather belt and then she will have a pain but there's no mark will stay there. So if she called the police, she cannot prove it. It's like taking and, a baseball bat to a phone. Yeah, up yeah. And if somebody body. can find the, the the link, guys, let me know so we can show it in the screen. This is a this is a book written by a Muslim in Spain, and the court in Spain, you know, uh, sentenced him, I think, for six months in jail. This is Islam. Beat your wife lightly. You're right. Anyway, thank you, uh, thank you, my dear sister, for calling. Thank you. All right, thank you, Subi. God bless. Bye bye. I mean, why in the world a human being wanna beat a woman? If you don't like to be with her, why you marry her? I mean, what this beating will will, will bring to you? What is the solution will, will solve to you? Will make her a good woman, will make you a good husband, she will cheat on you. If you are jeering her as of a goat, as if she's a goat. And she feels that she is, you know, a woman is a human like you. She have a feeling. She is not, even cats have feeling, my friend. So what do you mean you want to beat them? What will happen next? Tomorrow she will find somebody. He is a male and he is nicer and he is kind to her and she will cheat on you because you are a donkey. And then you, you wonder why she did cheat on me. We are beating her. There is no human being, he have a, I mean, I don't know how big the brain of a human being can be or how small it can be. He think that by beating someone, you will make the someone be good to you. And here the one is teaching us what is supposed to be wisdom or solution is Call himself God. He's Allah. Allah is saying to me, jail your wife, stop having sex with her, and beat her if she disobey you. What kind of God this God is? And do really this is solve the problem? 
just to show you the how the coward Muhammad he was not able to practice his own solution on himself when Muhammad he have his wives because they are the daughters of important men the daughter of Abu Bakr the daughter of Omar the daughter of etc he did not dare to 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 beat them look what happened Chapter 66, verse number 4 and 5, and etc. If you read this chapter, this chapter is speaking about Muhammad. He have fights with his wives because Muhammad, obviously, he is the bad man. Look what Muhammad he did. If you too turn in repentance to him, your heart are indeed so inclined. But if you back each other against him, truly Allah is his protector, and Jibreel, and every righteousness and righteous and one among those who believe, and for furthermore the angels will back him up. You see the coward. He is teaching the Muslims to beat their wives but when they're women they have a strong family to support them they have their parents who they are very important Muhammad he cannot make them upset he don't dare to beat them so he started crying like a puppy if you both of them support each other against him which mean me Muhammad huh okay you should know that uh, you know Allah is his supporter and Jibreel, look, what the heck? Two women fighting with their husband. What Allah and Jibreel are going to do? Muhammad, he need a protector. And this protector, his name is Allah, to protect him from two women. They are five foot tall. Allah is his protector. Allah is not enough. We need Jibreel. Jibreel is his protector. Uh, Jibreel is not enough. Every righteous Muslim, 1.6 billion, they will join the fight. Muhammad versus two women. And even every righteous Muslim is not enough. So we need furthermore the angels. Here we go. We, 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 we. Allah is coming. Allah is coming. Who is the first car is Allah? The second car is what? Let me guess. Let me guess. It's a limousine. Long, long limousine. Oh, this is Jibreel. Jibreel. Allahu Akbar. Jibreel is coming. Look, look, look. A lot of cars is coming. ISIS, ISIS, Al Qaeda, Zawahri, Osama bin Laden, brother Osama bin Laden is coming. Allahu Akbar. 1.6 billion Muslim are coming to support the Prophet against his wife. Allahu Akbar. Look, 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 look. Look, look, more cars, more cars is coming. There is a lot of cars. Oh, those are the angels. Farther, more the angels. All of this because this coward, he have a fight with two women. Why he don't beat them? The answer is very simple. They are the daughters of his companions who they are in control. They will kill him. So he was teaching the Muslim to beat their wives because those women are weak, but his wives, he don't dare to do anything with them. <sighs> Lisa Kazi, how are you, Lisa? Yeah, yeah, I will come to the Philippines, but you need to invite me. Am I invited? Nobody's inviting me. I will go. This is Islam, my friend. This is a man who claimed, and the funny, the Muslim, they lie. They say, uh, there is a an, uh, an, uh, writer, author, his name is Dornar Bar Barshor. He said, if the Prophet Muhammad was exist now, he can solve all the problems of the words where he's drinking his coffee in the morning. Really, George Bernard Barshor, he said that? And we cannot find the book of George, 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 George Bernard Shaw saying that anywhere. It was an, a claim written by a Muslim article, but nobody can find the book. Nobody finds such a book. It's a lie. 
And here we go. The one who can solve the problems of the world, he cannot solve a problem inside his house to the point he needs the support of Allah and Jibreel and every believer in the world and furthermore all the angels. It looked like the Almighty God and all departments of Islam, of Almighty God of Islam, not my God, they are busy trying to protect the Prophet from the two women who they are five foot tall. And I have to agree, Arab women, and I am an Arab, are very aggressive, so don't misestimate how dangerous the situation is. Imagine the poor Prophet against two Arabian women. They will eat him alive. <laughs> this is the prophet of God. Imagine Christian Prince, he started his chat with you today. He said, Guys, I have a fight with my two wives. And I told him, if you don't repent to Allah, Allah and Jibreel and every righteous. <laughs> and furthermore, the angels are going to support me against you. <laughs> it's so clear that he was a man. He is the man of his time. He is the man. I mean, this is so strong. Obviously, this guy is doing poo poo in his pants because of those two women. With such an army, you can fight the universe, not two wives. Allah is with you if Allah is God. And why you are adding Jibreel? If Allah is with you, who, who needs Jibreel? What Jibreel would do? He bring rocks? This is the most stupid cult religion ever. What this? A man is fighting with his two wives. Why he is bring? Allah is my supporter. And uh, Jibreel. And Jibreel is coming like, Yes, I'm here. Yes, master. What do you want? I have those two women. They are fighting me. Jibreel said, Hold on. Don't do anything yet. We are not ready. Allah is here. I am here. We need more. We need more. All the believers. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. All the believers. Takbir. Yes, sir. Allahu Akbar. Today we are going to do jihad. Allahu Akbar. Against who, sir? Against... The wives of the Prophet. Allahu Akbar. That's very dangerous. Please, can we fight Israel instead? Because they are very, very harmful and very aggressive. I prefer to go and do jihad in Afghanistan, but not to fight the wife of the Prophet Aisha. She is a very, very, very aggressive, and she might beat us with her sharp teeth. What? And then after they got the believers is not enough. And furthermore, are you ready, brother, now to do jihad? No, not yet. We need furthermore all the angels in the world. I see the angels. I see a lot of dust is coming. Oh, like 1,000 angels, 2,000 angels, 5,000 angels, 10,000 angels, 100,000 angels. Brother, are you could be called keep counting forever? There's a lot of angels. When we are going to start the war against Aisha and Hafsa, I mean, come on. Time is going, the sun set. This is a religion. And this is a prophet of God. Hmm? Hello? 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 I'm sure if you are a Muslim, you are so proud about your prophet. He's asking for help of Allah and the angels and the believers and Jibreel all against two women. I have to admit, those are dangerous women. Do you know what a woman can do? Do you know what a woman can do? This is why I'm not married yet. Ask me why I'm not married. I don't want what happened to the prophet to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You will spend your day watching this is a brother. Two two women scaring the hell of Muhammad. So what about the rest? The rest doesn't count. He has 13 wives according to Muslim, but he is scared of two. Two of them.
because of their parents. They are the leaders of two parties, Democrat and Republican. I wonder what Muhammad will do if his wife was Hillary Clinton. What toothbrush? Those are Arabian women, my friend. They are they are dangerous. And they are hairy. Unbelievable. And then the Prophet, he forbid Muslim women, Arabian women. You know, we are we 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 Middle Eastern, we are very hairy. You know, once I was swimming in the swimming pool, they told me, sir, you cannot swim wearing clothes. I said, I'm not wearing my clothes, this is my hair. Hello. I hope there's no atheist here. They will say, see, I told you that the origin of a human being is monkeys. Hello? Do we have any Muslim here? Hello? Any Muslim have a comment? No comment. All right. Well, look like we are out of comment here. What we can do? Guys, did you have a good time today? I hope you do. Remember, my friend, Islam is a very stupid religion. However, you need to teach yourself how to read. I'm not saying I read better than you, but how to read is not about how to read letters. It's how to dig behind the letters. I'm sure many people, they read this verse, but nobody noticed how ridiculous it is. Because people, they are not trained or they don't want to train their brain to analyze information. You see, the purpose of books is to supply information to your brain. It's not just to read. So after you read, there is a second process. is to try to understand what's going on. Going on. It's, you know, especially if it's speaking about something happening in history, you need to try to live the story. Try to be an imaginary person who lived a story which happened. Imagine yourself now in the time of Muhammad, and Muhammad is saying this statement, and this is why you are laughing now because it's very silly, but because I made it for you. Look clear how silly it is. So, my friend, Islam is not really. Uh, tough religion to defeat it is the most stupid easy to defeat every verse in the Quran is a joke every chapter every page in the Quran is a joke or what you need to do when you read try to analyze try to figure out what's happening not just to read Try to train your brain to be fast thinking the brain. You see, it is the brain is like a machine. If you are not going to practice what you are being given by God, the brain will, will be slow. You know, you if you are a person who just want to eat and drink and sleep and you know and take things easy and you don't want to think, then the brain will not practice, you know, it will be really a slow processor. Use it. Or you will lose it. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I, I am thankful for the ladies who called us today. I like to hear ladies more calling actually. Because first of all, we are Christians. And the Muslim try to say that women are not allowed to talk. When the fact this is false. Actually, the first one who asked the Messiah for a miracle, it was Mary. And she was sure that he can make it. That's why she asked for it. So women in Christianity, they are not second-hand citizens. When a Muslim, he quote for us that in the Bible says women, they should be quiet in the church. The verse there is speaking about women who they are not talking about God. This is a place of God. And there is a true. There is some women, they go just to talk about food, about cooking, about whatever. There is women 
who they don't want to be part of the church, but they are in the church. But women are always welcome to speak out and to share knowledge, and they can be the best teachers, actually. You see, the first teacher who teach you is your mother. It's not your father. It's your mother who teach you how to eat, teach you how to clean yourself, teach you how to grow up to be a man. She is the one who teach you to be a good person. A child who steals something, his mother is the first to know. She will say to him, don't do it again, or she will encourage him to do it, and she just created a thief. The mother can be either a wonderful teacher, can create a generation of good men and women, or she can be a bad woman who can create a generation of thieves and criminals. So, in Islam, when the Muslims they try to put the women in the shadow, they are committing a big mistake and a crime against God. For women are not no one. The Messiah, he ordered the Christians. He ordered the women to obey her husband, but at the same time, he ordered the man to sacrifice himself the same as the Messiah, he sacrificed himself to the church, which means the Messiah, he made the women equal to the church. So the obedience here is obedience of love, not the obedience of violence. The woman, she is obedient to her husband, for he is the head of the house because of love. The man, he sacrificed himself for his wife, the same as the Messiah sacrificed himself to the church, because of love and this is why there's a huge difference between the way we understand marriage in Christianity and the way they understand sex contract in Islam in Islam there's no marriage a man he marry he marry a woman not women a man who love he love a woman not women a man who want to have a family he will have a family with a woman not women the man who want to marry more than one, he don't love anyone. He love to be with women. That what is in Islam. And that's why the, the, the Messiah, he, he made it clear that the man should marry one woman. One woman, one man. That is family. Anything else is a lost. Why a man he need to have four or five or three? And how in the world, if you say to me, it's not enough for him to have four, why four? What about having a hundred? Actually, in Islam, there's no limit. Or what Islam says, that four women at the same time, but you have unlimited numbers to remarry again. And that is very ugly. Uh why you don't allow us to have some fun? I don't understand. Uh, 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 Christian by choice, my friend, let, let, let this person have fun. What he's doing? Come on, guys. Take it easy. Let him have fun. I mean, what do you want now? He want to have fun? All right. So any, anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope by tomorrow I will be able to do a broadcast, but I'm not sure really. Um, uh, I have some house repair to do. If I'm able to finish, I will do broadcast. If not, maybe the day after, we will see. So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And again, I like to hear more ladies calling us. Share your voice and let people hear that you are a speaking person in Christianity, you are not a shadow. Be part of the mission. The Messiah, the Messiah, he ordered all the Christians to teach. And women, they can be, they can be really a clear messengers to bring people to Christ. Because they can go where we cannot go. They can go between women and bring women to Christ. And women are a very important uh, uh, part of the society. A society without women is not exist and society without men is not exist too so we are the society and you are part of it which is a very important part of it so be part of the mission thank you very much for being here christ is lord and islam is false see you 
soon again. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.